Yeah, I don't even know what this number is. Like, I don't think anyone died that fight, to be honest. Um... Seven nine nine four. Hmm. Okay. Reset Zoom. I'm trying to find where this damage happened. Okay, I see a 7994. 7994, uh, 148 is blocked according to. Yeah, so this is saying 148 was blocked, and thus that this is blocked, not absorbed. And then 32,663 was the unmitigated. And then mitigated is the delta between these two. Um, so that's according to Warcraft logs. Um, so let's take a look. Overkill. Uh, and I don't know if that's true for all damage schools, but... It's like unmitigated damage. And then that's the damage taken. This is the absorbed. This might be a boolean. I don't know. That's so weird. Let's see if I can find what happened right before here. Uh, Wally got a hateful strike. And he took 7685. Uh, 7685, unmitigated 29,463, mitigated 21,178, which is the delta between the two. And then this said nothing blocked or absorbed. So, yeah, I guess the that's blocked. Um, so blocked and absorbed need to get swapped. Although we saw some situations where that wasn't true, I thought. Unless blocking counts as an absorb. I don't think anyone would have put a shield on during this fight. Let's take a look at maybe another fight. Um, let's look at, like, Gluth, maybe. Uh, Gluth. Okay, what was the last damage taken on Gluth? Towards the end here. And I see uh, Tefia taking damage, but she probably wasn't at full. Oh, yeah. I don't think a lot of us were at full at the end of this fight. Um, Muffin. Oh, yeah. I. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think we are all, like, pretty low health. Um... And what type of damage? Swing damage on Muffin. Damage taken. Are there more pages? No. Muffin. We one-shot that. So I'm trying to find this, and I'm not seeing anything in here. I see a Decimate. Nope. I see a Terrifying Roar. Um, next page. Muffin Main. Where is it? I don't see where he took this damage. Um... <laughs> And that is Gluth who did that damage. What? Damage taken. Next page. Decimate. Sapper charge. I feel like that data is like 
not here. Oh, is this a heel? No. What? No, this is him hitting Gluth. I'm an idiot. Um, okay, Gluth hitting Proximos. Proximos getting melee. 1943. Uh, okay, where's that 2000? Okay, I see a 2000. It's a crushing blow. I see a 2000 crushing. Um, unmitigated 4087. So this is the damage that was actually taken. And this was the damage that happened prior. So the overkill, uh, percent overkill, unmitigated. Unmitigated id. Um, and I don't know if, I think, yeah, I think that's actually the amount of damage that's truly taken. Um, okay, good. Good to know. Um, so what I should be able to do is if someone was at 100%, um... And they are now at, let's see. Let's see if someone was at 100% and they're still at 100%. I want to see what that is. I want to see if there are any damage events where people stay at the same health. That is interesting to me. Uh, and these are probably all heals. Uh, spell casts, okay. Um, damage, swing damage. That's me hitting a roach, okay. Oh, yeah, um. So this is all like outbound damage. Um, let's do, um, if that and that and the, uh, the current, ah, oh, fuck, I can't get the base parameters. I could probably in a similar way. Um, hmm. I need to... I think I need to simplify this a bit. Um... So if the health is the same, and I want to know that they took damage, and the... I have to get this from base parameters, uh, unfortunately, and I don't have an accessor for that, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to make an accessor for that. Um, okay. Um, yeah, this one will, uh, I don't know, I split that many times. Advanced parameters, and then here we're gonna do the same thing, but base parameters. Got the base parameters. Base parameters. Base parameters. This gives me like source and dust of things. Uh, S A D V base G. Okay, and now we have to go through and make sure we have everything, which we definitely don't. Uh, base parameters. Uh, base colon base. Okay, spell heal absorbed. Swing mist. Uh, spell extra attacks. I'm trying to think if I want to regex this. I don't think I want to. Uh, damage. Shield mist. 
range mist. Spell periodic mist. I don't care about the ordering here. Spell mist. Spell interrupt. Spell drain. Spell dispel. Holy shit, how many of these things are there? I guess pretty much everything has this. Spell aura broken. Spell aura broken spell. Spell aura applied. Uh, spell aura refresh. Removed. Applied dose. Probably removed dose. Yup. Woo! Spell cast starts. Holy shit. I do not remember this many things. It's fucking gross. Yeah, I think once I have like something interesting that I'm doing with this data, if I do find something interesting, um, then we will uh, write something that generates this. Party kill, holy shit. Unit destroyed. Unit died. It's like everything has this. <laughs> I, I, I should have just grabbed all of these things. Advance, okay, spell create. Jesus. I should have just copy pasted these and let the compiler tell me like the two things that didn't have a base field. That would have uh, worked. Jesus, stop. Oh man. <laughs> Surely we're almost at the fucking end, right? Range damage has uh, advanced, 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 advanced. This is so fucking annoying, dude. I'm so pissed that I did this. It's such a fucking terrible way of doing this. Holy shit, what the fuck? Wait, I looped around. I just kept going. All right, that should, that should be good enough. That should be everything. Um, oh, saw a warning. Unreachable pattern. Okay, I threw a couple in here that I didn't need. Uh, periodic heal, spell drain. Cast success. Okay, we went a bit overkill. Uh, heal. Fuck off him. Um, okay, 
Should be good now. All right, so then what I want to do is I want to say uh, if they had 100% health and they were the target, so event dot um, base parameters, I think it's safe to unwrap. I think everything has a base parameter that hasn't advanced. Uh, dot target, uh, dot dest, dot grid, I think. It's equal to add unit grid dot zero. <laughs> okay, uh, and that. So basically, if they had 100% health and now they have 100% health and they were the target for whatever happened, then maybe they took, maybe we can see uh, information about this. Okay, mm, periodic heal. These are gonna be overheals. I want damage, damage. Okay, damage landed. Makes a spiderling, hit Proximos, and he has 100% health, and he took zero damage. Ah, okay, okay. So that's a good sign. Amount zero, amount zero, amount zero. Okay. Amount 299. Um. Ah, because Magsna's in here. I don't filter for only players. We'll just say, it like, if. Um, add unit uh, grid dot zero starts with player. Bit aggro, but whatever. So only if it's a player do we record their health. It should cut down a lot on the noise. Because then this would never happen, because that would be none. All right. Oh, yeah, there's almost. Oh, wait, no. How are there so many lines in here? Heals. Okay, damage. Um. Damage landed, and then we can say amount colon 69. All right. That's a heal. Yeah, it's a heal for 69 with 69 overhealing. Mm-hmm. 13.0. What is this? Energize. Mana spring. Uh, yep. Yeah, um, hmm. So, I think I need to make an accessor for damage. Let's try that. Let's do that. Um, amount colon. Let's heal. Okay, so damage. Damage shield missed. Swing landed. So I think I want to ignore that because I think swings happen first. I mean, swing landed seems to be when it actually happens. So we have swing damage, swing damage landed. And these were confusing because they were kind of dupes. Um, so we'll just go through these all for now. Unmitigated and amount. Really, anything with unmitigated. Oh, there's a couple things that shouldn't be absorbed. Or no, what did I change? I changed uh, overkilled. Yeah, so that's gone. Okay. Um, so unmitigated. Everything that has unmitigated, I want to extract. And then I also want to get the amount. And we'll do that just for now. Um, oh, come on. Uh, get the, what do I want to do? Like, get information about damage here or something? Um, get damage info? Do I want to make a structure here? Uh, 
I could do dot unmitigated where I get the unmitigated damage. I could do something where I get information about damage. Um, one is for damage done, the other is for damage received. Um, I don't think so. Um, let's see. Unmitigated. Un okay, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, seven. We have seven of these things. All right, um, I don't know what I want to do. Uh, I think this might be like... In theory, one melee could hit more than one target. Yeah, but I see, um, like, it doesn't line up with the logs. Like, we see duplicates of events. So I don't really know what the difference is between, like... Every every time there's a swing, there's a landed. There's a, there's a swing for every landed. And the landed is always after the swing, and they're always the exact same source and destination and damage. Um, so I think what I might do is make a structure just called, like, damage. This is, like, a generic damage events. And I think what we'll do here is a base... Base parameters. Um, uh, advanced amount. Uh, this is the damage uh, dealt. This is the damage prior to any mitigation. So this is like unmitigated. Okay, and that should be good enough. This is uh, base parameters, advanced parameters. And then we'll be able to uh, just generically extract damage. Uh, and this gives us source and death, advanced. Uh, there's like school and whether or not it's a spell and things that I don't really care about as a healer, to be honest. I really only just care about damage. So like damage. Um... Uh, oops. Get the damage information if this is a damage event. Uh, match self. Okay, and then mitigated. And then. Uh, okay, swing damage landed. Um, base advanced amounts unmitigated, dot dot, turn this into a sum damage base advanced amounts unmitigated, and that's going to be a problem due to needing to clone those fields. Uh... And amount and unmitigated, don't need clones. Advanced does need a clone. And base needs a clone. Uh, fuck, I really want those to be refs. Just, uh, we'll a ref this. Uh, ref should be implied. We'll say a ref to a. Yeah, there we go. Like, th this is an operation I see myself doing a lot, so perf matters here. Uh, 1190. Okay, and then. Gonna ref these. Fuck. I'm just gonna do this. It's kind of cheesy, but I think it's okay here. Amount. Hmm, maybe I can't do that. What? Really? Okay. Okay. 
I don't know how I want to format this. There's like a couple different ways I can do it, but uh, we'll go with this. Okay. Um, none. All right. Sweet. Unmitigated. Colon. Then we have swing damage. Then we have the environmental damage. Fuck. Yeah, I don't like that. I like that more, even though it's kind of gross. Um, environmental damage. Range damage. Spell damage. Damage shield. What's that? Is that like block? Uh, what is that? Damage shield. Nutch makes na thorns. Okay. Uh, so like, uh, e.g. thorns, right, is an example of that. Um, periodic damage. Nah, it's not powered shield, that's absorbed. Uh, spell periodic damage. Okay. Let's double check them all. Swing damage landed. Got it. Swing damage. Got it. Okay, so let's see how many damages we have. Swing damage. Environmental damage. Range damage. Spell damage. Spell periodic damage. Okay, and then damage dot star this new line. Uh, damage shield missed. Don't care about misses. Swing damage landed. Yep. Swing damage, environmental damage, range damage, spell damage, damage shield. Okay, sweet. All right, so now what we can do is, uh, let's just do this. If let sum damage is equal to damage, then just print the damage. And I think what we'll see is that there's gonna be a lot of dupes and those are the swing damages. Um, vent dot damage. Mm, really? Okay. All right. Um, and let's just do damage unmitigated. So we can just see that, and we'll see probably a lot of dupes. Um, let's see. Yeah, like these, right? These are swings, right? Swing damage, swing damage. Um, okay, mounts. And then we can just, uh, we can print the uh, target, right? So damage.base.target, uh, did I call it target? Dest. Okay, UUID, good. Won't be the f next episode of Fuzzle House? I have no idea. Yeah, so like this is this is a great example of uh, swing damage, and then the swing damage occurring after the fact, and yeah, it's really annoying. Um, so this is swing damage 
Dot star, uh, 5 E8 dot star, 15 20. There should be two occurrences of this, right? And we have swing damage here, and then we have swing damage later, uh, swing damage landed. And these are the same events. Uh, it's done by Noth, it's done to Mizari. The damage that is being dealt is, uh, 1520 damage, unmitigated is 6,153, 184 was blocked. Like, these are the same event, but they happen 300 milliseconds later. And this is why it's like, I don't know which one I want to use. Like, landed is probably when the damage actually occurs. Um, yeah, it's kind of fucking stupid. <laughs> it's the same information. Um, now this tells me where the creature is positioned because the advanced information is actually the creature info And then this one the advanced information is the uh, player information So this one actually tells me the player health and this one tells me the health of Noth, which is at 45% So there is like slightly different information in them um, But it's the same it's the same Swing it's the same attack. It's not two attacks that did the exact same damage with the exact same mitigation 400 milliseconds apart. Um, so there's not much you can do about that other than maybe just ignore them. And I think what I might do is just uh, maybe ignore one of them. Like... the <sighs> Spell damage... Like, maybe I only care about landed, I'm not sure. Uh, landed happens after, um, but I think that's when the, the damage is actually applied. Whereas spell damage, um, it's just weird because like spell damage doesn't tell you about the mob doing the damage, which I think is really strange. Um, Astral, let's see. I'm going to try and find a spell damage from a boss. Yeah, uh, spell damage done by searing totem to the boss. Yeah, it's weird. Spellcast work the same way? No, it doesn't. Spellcast doesn't do that. Um... So... Yeah, it's, it's only melee attacks, and only, yeah, non-spell melee attacks. So I think what I might do is just comment out swing damage. Okay. So now we're going to do... What does spell cast start? It tells you when a spell is be, uh, starting to cast, but it doesn't tell you how much damage it did, or who it's even being done to. Um... So, uh, basically, what I want to do is I want to look at if there's damage, if the current HP is 100, and the dest on the damage, the destination for the damage is equal to who has 100% health, and the current health is 100. Okay, so now this is only on damage events. There we go. Uh, dest, 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 target. Did I rename it? No, uh, base, dest. Okay, so if we have a player who has 100 health, 100% 100 health, and damage happened, uh, and damage happened to them, and they still have 100 HP, um, and in this situation, actually, if we had swing damage, that would uh, potentially be off. So, let's take a look. Uh, Vim dash. Um, okay, so, I here's my, here's my hypothesis. All of these damage events are probably zero. Like, the amount is probably zero for all of these. So, we're just going to print the uh, damage. Uh, we'll print the damage.amount. Right, so this is the actual amount of damage that occurred, and this is 
damage that is done to a player and doesn't affect their HP percentage from dropping below 100, and they're all zero. Oh no! Uh oh. Uh oh. If. Okay, well, now I'm unhappy. <laughs> so now I'm scared. <laughs> now I'm scared. Shit! Um, here's damage done by Patrick Gollum to Sama. And Sama is, yep, the same uh, advanced parameters. He has 100% health, and he took three damage. Fuck! Fuck. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. Um... Wow. Wow. Um, let's see uh, who... who <laughs> uh, sort. Numerical. 48 damage. Okay. And then we'll do 99. And I'm curious if those are like weird batching things. So, yeah, that's about right. less than 1%, yeah. I mean, that's what I was trying to figure out, right? I was trying to figure out if they rounded nearest or if 100% health meant you had full health. And unfortunately, 100% health does not mean you have full health. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <sighs> well, that sucks. Um... 185 for 1%. Yeah, 185. Oops. 185. That's going to be a tank, right? 0 0.01. Divide by that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's 18,000 health, but obviously that's not the case. So if we were to look at, like, this. All right. If it's exactly 60. This probably happened a couple times. So 45, 49. Right? The, the more damage they lose, the more accurate it is. So if I divide this by point, uh 0.4 this means this person had somewhere so i can like ballpark the health that they have effectively um the healer can't tell the difference i can fucking tell a difference like it's a big difference um oops If it reports 100%, the unit frame will sh show full health, but that doesn't that doesn't affect the fact that damage can be missing, uh, and it affects understanding how much health tanks have and trying to figure out how much health people have, and that's what I'm trying to figure out right now is trying to figure out how much health people have, because knowing how much health people have accurately is really fucking important to being able to heal. Um. Hmm. All right, let's see what we can do here. Uh Let me see how accurately I can uh, track someone's health. 
HP. So this is uh, percent HP. Percent HP. Percent HP. Okay, here we go. Okay. So, um, we're going to keep track of how much health people have, and then we're also going to track how much health they are missing. Um, let's say missing. We're going to say, if, it's, if they're a player, uh, update last known percent HP. Then we'll uh, update um, or initialize missing HP based on percent. Uh, so we'll say if advanced current HP is 100, then we'll say uh, missing insert advanced unit GUID. This is probably actually what add-ons do. Um, they probably, when they get 100%, they reset missing. Uh, inserts, units, squid, zero. Um, missing, insert, zero. Okay, so I'll initialize them to having zero missing health. Uh, and let's make sure that's an I64. Okay, so now when someone takes damage, we can say if the um, uh, damage base dest guid, huh. uh, let ent is uh, if let sum ent is equal to this, we'll do a. Uh, Missing gets this. Okay, so we're going to look up that entry. Borrow not implemented for string. Uh, dot zero. Okay, and then um, ends minus equals damage dot amount. Okay, so now we're not tracking heals right now, uh, but we should be able to go through and kind of plot people's missing health. And then once they get topped up, that gets reset back to zero. Obviously, this is not going to be accurate. It's only going to decay uh, until they go back to full. So it'll be like falling off, but whatever, that's fine. Then we'll just say if the... Uh, Ent dot, oops, uh, if the damage base dest guid is equal to this, then we will print the current time and the uh, missing. So these should all be like negative numbers, and this is the basically the missing health over time. Um, and this should be accurate. Uh, we'll go to 7 here. Okay, and then every once in a while that will get reset back to zero. Um, and what I can do is I can also, so I need to do the same thing but for heal. So let's go do that, heal. So we'll go to uh, FN damage, uh, get the uh, heal information. If this is a heal event, and we'll say a heal, and then heal. Okay. Uh, heal dot star this new line. Okay, heal absorbed. Damage that was absorbed. That doesn't affect someone's health. Um, it affects the damage that they took, but it doesn't affect their health. So we're gonna, going to ignore that for this, uh, and then we're gonna say match a 
self uh, spell periodic heal base advanced ooh base spell advanced amount overhealed and I think we are comfortable with our overheal I think we know that that's actually overheal now um. And that's the information I really care about right now. I don't really care about crits and that sort of shit. Uh, generic heal event. So we're going to say a heal. And base advanced. We'll have a spell. A ref spell. The spell. Um. Spell heal. Is that it? Is it just periodic heal and... Okay, sick. All right. Um, amount, amount healed. This is amount overhealed. Uh, this is like... Um, uh, so the damage we do, amount damage dealt... Um, I might say, like, unmitigated is kind of what I want to say here. Um, uh, amount healed excluding, um, incl uh, including overheal, right? So we have to subtract out the overheal if we actually want to determine how much healing was done. Uh, okay. Then we can do a sum... Heal base advanced uh, spell amounts overhealed overhealed okay okay spell periodic heal spell heal and that's it <laughs> everything else is not a heal. And then uh, dot dots. Like knowing crits and stuff, we can add that, parse that stuff out later if we really care. Uh, and then down here, we can go and say uh, if let sum heal is equal to. Um, so there, if there are advanced parameters, technically we don't need to really do it in here. Let's just do this. Let's put advanced down here. This is a. Uh, Update uh, percent HPs. This is handle damage. This is handle healing. Uh, event heal. Uh, if we have information about how much they are missing, then we are going to update their health. And here's where we can do some really cool stuff. Uh, heal dot amount. Now I'm going to do assert and is equal to zero, and it, it won't be. That's going to panic, uh, and I'm excited about that. I want that to panic. Same thing here. Okay. Um, uh, damage, 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 damage. Uh, heal. Heal. So, get their missing health, update it, and then that assertion is going to fail. Yes, and there we go. And let's take a look at what happened here. And what we should see is that the overheal amount is hopefully the same as the amount health they have. And there might be some fudging here, but if we do heal.overhealing and ent uh, overhealed. And hopefully these are pretty comparable. And th they're identical. Sweet. So that means that we were able to track a player who had full health, lose damage, and then see them get healed back, and it matches identically to the, to the exact same number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assert that these are equal, and they're not going to be. And the reason they're not going to be, well, um, and then afterwards we'll do if heal overhealed 
uh, is greater than zero, then we're gonna say ent is zero. Um, if we overhealed our target, then we know they are at max HP uh, and not missing any health, right? So if overhealing occurred, then we know that we can just reset their health back to zero. Um, and then, yep, that failed. And uh, basically, this is going to happen um, in situations where someone takes like a tiny amount of damage, I think. Um, these are probably going to be really small numbers, but someone probably was at 100% health. Ooh. Oh, whoops. Um, if heal overhealed is greater than zero. So if overhealing occurred, then it should be identical to the amount of health that they have. So this is, uh, oh, weird. Okay, well, that fucking sucks. Um, this might just be detecting batches. Um... Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um heal advanced uh HP current HP See what their current HP is. Hundred. Yeah. So this is kind of what I expected. Um, fuck. God, this would be so much easier on retail. This is a project I wanted to do too. However, a web project. But my question is, how do you make it easily modifiable? Oh, there's not a good way to do that, really. I was thinking about making templates for every spell where I could easily tweak the as the balance patches come out. And how do you include item stats? I mean, you can just get a listing of all the items in the game and the stats on them. And yeah, this is Rust. Um... Is there a WoW API? Uh, not for Classic. There is for Retail. Um, but not for classic and retail. It's really hard with like the eye level stuff because items can vary so much. Um, although it's actually like almost easier. <laughs> Let's see. Fuck man. Yeah. I think this is basically just some batching shit. <sighs> if this is not equal to this, print this. I see how often this happens. Is this going to be really spewy? Like, yeah, this is going to happen a lot, isn't it? Shit. I didn't put a new line. <laughs> like that's uh, that's that's some gross data. Let's see. Maybe we have stuff that's off here. I saw some like really big numbers. I feel like let's go. Uh, let's do uh, I don't know six. Probably good here. So like this situation kind of makes sense to me. So, yeah, I think a lot of these that we're seeing, a lot of these where they're really close, this is basically rounding errors. This is basically, uh, you overhealed them for 89, um, but our calculation had them at missing 44 health, uh, but it says that they're at 100 health, and that is, I, I guess, why would these numbers 
not match. Oh, it's because uh, they probably took a tiny amount of damage, and then we had it said that they were at 100% health, like in this code, we set their, uh, basically current health was 100, so we set them to missing zero, but in reality, they were missing 40 health, right? Um, and like, yeah, we're gonna see a lot of those. When these things are like super similar numbers, um, those are likely just going to be due to them not truly being at full health, but we are being told that they're at full health. Um, yeah, and th that's most of them, but there are some of these situations where we have an overhealing and they are actually missing like 1600 health. And I think that's probably batching. Um, cause they're at a hundred percent, right? The overheal lines up with that, but it doesn't line up with the amount of health that we calculate that they have. Now that either means that they're taking damage in a different way. Um, and that, how many of these discrepancies are there? A decent amount. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, if the delta between, so I said not equal, if the delta between these two exceeds 200, right? Uh, which would never happen due to the like small health discrepancy, and now we're down to 490. So this is weeded out all of the small discrepancies just due to something like, what I said before, basically, if you're at if you're at 100% health, but you're technically missing 40, right? No one's going to have 100% health and be missing 200 health, right? That would require that they have 20,000 health, which they're not going to have, and I should have been able to do that in my head. Um, so effectively, this is now telling me when there is a relatively large discrepancy uh, between the amount of health that we say someone has and the uh, percent health. Um, okay, so this is a great example. Um, are we only doing this on players? No. Um, like those are... These, this has to be uh, 34, 528. I guess that's not going to exist. Um, hmm. I think this is on, um, this is probably maybe a mind control happening on, uh, Resuvius is what I'm thinking here. Are you filtering on players? I'm not, uh, but I don't necessarily want to filter on players because there are some fights where you don't heal players. Um, I do wonder if this is Resuvius, or for some reason there's something that heals that I don't know heals. Um. Hmm. I'm only resetting when people get back to full. So if someone doesn't get back to full, this could drift more and more, uh, due to those rounding errors. Um. This looks very Resuvius-y. Uh, do I not have Resuvius in this log, though? Uh, maybe I don't. Yeah, I have no Resuvius in this log. Okay, so it's not Resuvius fight. Um... Okay, uh, let's print the, um, let's print their GUID. Cause that's really weird. <laughs> that's really fucking weird. 
Um, this is heal base death squid zero. It could be a bug. Maybe I'm missing something. No, that's a player. Oh, fuck me. Proximos. Oh, God. Um. Hmm. Okay, so if it's Proximo's, print the damage. We'll print the entry, which is the current amount of health. Yeah, we might as well print elapsed. And then we'll also print the uh, damage done amount. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing down here. If it matches that, I'm gonna do the heal amount. Okay. Um, and then this is post. Okay, so we'll do here is we're gonna filter this just so there's not as much spew. And then we're gonna look for the negative 30,000 or whatever ridiculous number that is. Heal based destination, okay. Okay, what did I fuck up? Uh, damage heal. Uh, format specifier, yep. And then we can just say like minus and then plus. So we can differentiate those. Okay, and Of 32, uh, 0 through 9, uh, 3. Wasn't it like 32, 31, 30, something like that? It was like a. Oh, I guess there's going to be. Um. So I want something, what am I looking for here? I should have noted the, the number. Um, let's just do this, moose. There we go, problem solved. <laughs> problem solved, now we look for moose. What does it mean when you have a dependency missing? I have no idea, it, it, it probably just means that you don't have a, a library or add-on or something. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's fucking see what the fuck happened. Uh, okay, obviously, uh, there's a 34,484 damage hit. Hmm. Spell damage. Uh, living poison. Living poison did damage to... Uh, Proximos. Uh, the spell that did the damage was explode. The recipient of the damage was indeed Proximos, and it did 34,000 damage. And then how much health did they have? Zero. And then they died. They died. They fucking died. Okay. Um, so they were dead. Okay, so here's another question. Does 0% health mean they died? <laughs> um, okay, are these just all deaths? <laughs> I think these are all just deaths then. Um... Wait, but isn't that an overheal? Because they were dead. Ah, and then I probably healed them up. The heal, 
um, after that big damage, right? The heal's gonna come later. That's a resurrection. So we resurrected them, and then I did a heal on them, and then my internal uh, stats were off. Um, although Moose indicates an overheal. Because they were dead. How the fuck did they get healed? Oh god. Yep. Is this batching? Is is this literally the batch indicator? Let's take a look at Proxmos. Let's see. It's dead. And there's the resurrect. On Proxmos. Okay. Uh, cause a moose will happen on a heal. So he's dead. And then he gets resurrected, and then that's the discrepancy, I think. Is I think uh, he got healed up, and then there's a discrepancy. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so I guess I need to just handle deaths. Um, and it looks like that's going to be probably a unit died. There's a bunch of different ways that people die. But it looks like unit died is the main thing. And it looks like the target is what matters there. So handle death. Um, if let uh, event unit died uh, base. It's only base on there, I think. Unit died, yeah, just base. Okay. Equals event. Then um, uh, just remove them from the databases. Or set them to, well, missing dot remove base dest uh, grid zero. Uh, remove player from the missing health database, as we have no idea how much health they're missing. Um, another thing, that's a great, this is a great example of, so we see the aura removed, that's when he died, and then this is where he actually died. So um, here's the explode, the spell damage. Um, can I see how much health he took? So he has 71 eye level, 34, 31, 30. And yeah, there's nothing in here that tells me how much damage he actually, uh, like, wait. One of these might be overkill. Let me see here. Um, spell. Because if it's the damage that's actually taken... Amount and then unmitigated. So if we look at this spell damage 34k Okay, let's see I think spell damage these might be in a different order um Let's go and find the log for this this would have been um Let's take a look. Encounters and trash fights. Let's look exclusively at Proximos. We're gonna look at his damage taken. And let's look for when he dies. Um, no, that's not what I want. I want friendlies. Uh, Proximos, and damage taken, and then I'm looking for a 34484. I should be able to determine how much health he had when he died. First page, I'm not seeing that, 34484. Takes Proximus for those. Hmm. Should be encounters and trash fights. So this should be everything. Yep, 
Is that is that Frogger? I wonder if Frogger's not on here. Let's take a look. I, I need to find basically a spell damage. Uh, let's just. I'm gonna try and find when he took damage, cause I think I actually know that he died. Uh, maybe. Um, from that, I don't know. Okay. Um, don't start. I'm gonna look for a uh, one thirty two. With also a, actually that's not very unique. I'm gonna look for a uh, one eight nine four. All right. I see an. I'm looking for an acid volley. And swing damage. Okay. Fifty six twenty one. This is allegedly. Plague Gargoyle does an Acid Volley, but why is this showing up as Swing Damage? Um, because here, this is a, uh, yeah, what the fuck? 5261, unmitigated, 1894, Damage dealt. Okay. Apparently acid, like, but that's a fucking spell. What? And there's the damage coming in. There's nothing saying it's Acid Volley. Plagued Gargoyle, Periodic Damage, Acid Volley here. I see, so Acid Volley went out as spell... Periodic damage? Makes no sense. It, to me, it looks like a melee. I, uh, like... Hmm. Well, that's fucked. Um... Let's find, uh, that's web spray. Let's find that. Um, Proxmo's taking, uh, 1674. All right, here we go. Spell absorbed. Uh, so spell damage. So, uh, took. 624 damage was taken. 2089 was unmitigated. So let me make sure spell damage is in the same order. And it looks like it is. So amount taken and unmitigated. Then we have the school, uh, resisted, blocked, absorbed, and then this is critical, is what I have that listed as. Glancing crushing is offhand. Hmm. Yeah, that's the, this is actually absorbed. Um... Okay, so I think we're good on spell damage. I think we just need to track when people died. So uh, unit died, uh, remove them from this and then uh, set their uh, percent HP to zero. So we'll just do, um, well, it's already, that's already gonna be set to zero. Okay, and then we don't track deltas until someone gets to full health. Um. And we still have a moose. And what happened here? So basically this is saying, hmm. 
Overhealed for 1632, but we had them set at 1404 health. Okay, let's see if this is a batch. Uh, so this, Dot Star 1632. All right, there's only one occurrence of that. Well, there's actually a swing damage. Uh, but there's a heal. I healed Proximos uh, with a flash heal. And I healed for 2154 with 1632 overhealing. And we have them. So that means they are now at full health. And that's indicated by the fact that they're at 100% health. But for some reason, we had them at a different health before here. So now I'm looking in the logs kind of beforehand. Um, so this is basically that heal. This is, this is the event where uh, they got healed. So what I'm looking for is um, why the fuck? So they took another heal. Uh, what is this? Yeah, they got healed. Looks like a chain heal landed. And they're at 93% health after that chain heal landed. Um, and I have that chain heal hitting them for 573, and that looks good. So there's a discrepancy here that's relatively large. 1632 and 1404. 228 is the discrepancy. Um, so, they got healed, I have them set at zero health, and that is, they got healed for, so it's overhealing, they got healed up to full. Okay, um, let's try and see if we can see that. So they should have these really small heals on them that hit for 20, apparently. I didn't even know it would do that. Uh, we are at, looking for a 455 millisecond. How far back is that? A decent amount of time. Okay. Looks like this is probably... Nope. Okay, um, four... Dot 455 dot star ID. Um, dot star comma 20 comma. Swing damage landed. Not that. Okay, why the fuck do I see healing them for 20? Because I don't see that. I don't see a situation where I healed them for 20. Or anyone healed them for 20. Um, so, let's find the 1632. Found it. Hmm. Fe5, Fe5 destination. Uh, heal. I don't even know it would heal for 20. Like, that's what's really confusing to me, is what, what this would even be. Uh, let's find the 1159. So this is helium for 20. Let's print the spell. Fuck it. Um, for healing, I can print the spell. Heal.spell name. I should be able to get the name. Oops. Um, okay, 
Okay. Bloodthirst. Uh, so where's that moose? So everything like lines up pretty well, and then uh, here is, I guess this is the one I was looking at. So there's the chain heels landing, there's the flash heel landing. Um, that's fully overhealed? Holy fuck, did they get, wow. Wait, how did two flash heels land at the same time? Oh, that's batch, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, look at the fucking batching. These heels landing at the same time. Ugh, gross. Um So I'm going to print uh overhealing as well. So we'll do heal dot uh overhealed. Get that information as well. Okay, uh, overheal zero. And then we have an overheal of 1632, an overheal of 20, yeah. So all of these are f complete overheals, which makes sense. Um, so overheal of 20, we know they're at full health. We see them take 255 damage. They bloodthirst, so we put them up. There's no overhealing on that. They take another hit. Bloodthirst, take another hit. They get chain healed with no overhealing, take more damage, more damage, and then they're getting healed the, their fucking ass off. And then there's a discrepancy. Uh, so this, basically this flash heal hits and overheals for more than I would have expected their health is missing. Um... So, maybe they had, like, a buff change or something like that. It's the only thing I could think of, so let's go find this. This is this is that event. This is the heal that occurred. This is this heal. It's the 2154 overhealing for 1632. So, we know, we know that they were missing 1632 health at this point, but we thought they were missing 1404. Um, and that's a massive discrepancy. And, uh, okay, so what would cause that? So I'm going to just look at this whole thing just so it highlights even harder. I know it's like, it's really hard to fit this on the screen. Um, so they should have gotten chained. Yeah, here's a chain heel. Let's see what they got. They got, they got dunked on with some chain heels. So this is the, this is the end. Uh, I'll just put some new lines in here so we know that's the that's the destiny. Um, we have a chain heal that definitely went through and hit for 573 with no overhealing. And we see that. Perfect. Uh, we see a spell cast success. Oh, jeez. I hate this game. Um, so, what the fuck? All right, so I healed them. I successfully cast a flash heal on them, uh, which resulted, I guess that's my health. I was at 100% health, okay. So my flash heal went off, they got healed by a chain heal, and then my flash heal actually went into effect, and that's because I got batched, right? Um, and let's see, the other chain heal probably landed soon, no, oh shit.
I'm really curious what the order of operations is with chain heal. Because basically, I landed a heal. I landed a heal, and then I'm the one who ended up overhealing. <laughs> that fucking sucks. That fucking blows. It, f it feels like how the game plays, to be honest. Um, leader of the pack got removed. Okay. Leader of the pack. And does that give health? Uh, wow. I think it does. Nope, ranged and melee crit. Okay, so it's not that. Um, here is a heal going off on them for 839. It's this chain heal. Okay. We have another heal hitting for 680, which happened there. We have another chain heal, which hit for 851. And I see that. Okay. Now the things before here are damage. Uh, war stomp. Okay, that's an aura removed, deep wound removed, spell damage. So a disease cloud hit them for 279 damage, and we see that. That's what we track. Wait a minute, that's the highest number. Maybe it hit it for 254. Um, okay. Uh, 279. It's spell damage, but why would, why would this number, why would the damage received be the highest number? And that's now where I'm confused. Okay, I see disease cloud hitting him at 106. Uh, okay, we have like different times, apparently... I see a disease cloud hitting him for 279, unmitigated 254. So he took more damage? He took more damage than the unmitigated damage? Like Warcraft logs, right? I see 279 damage taken and eight fifty or 254 unmitigated, which is more damage being dealt than like. I guess maybe he's weak. Maybe he has a debuff on him where he's weak. Um. Because, like, if that's the case, like, that, that unmitigated damage lines up decently well with, like, that, that's, like, 20 damage there. He probably takes damage again from it. Uh, let's see. He takes that. He takes a... He gets cleaved for 2205. Uh, 3975 unmitigated, and I see that. Unmitigated, 3975, 2205 damage taken. Um, and that's what I calculate. Okay. He got chain healed. Ooh, he got deep wounded. Whoa. Okay, I see a cleave for 2205. And right before then, he took a deep wound for 95. What? No, he did a deep wound. Sorry. Um, he got healed uh, by a chain heal for 426, and we see that. He got damaged by a disease cloud. It's fucking impossible to read this. I'm sorry, chat. Um... 
He got damaged by a disease cloud for 261. Uh, and there's that. Energize. Nope. Aura removed. Bloodthirst ended. Oh, uh, let's see about that. Does bloodthirst affect your HP? Nope. Yeah, the next melee attacks restore uh, 20 health, I think, is the max talent there. Yeah, 20 health, and that's what he's getting. He's getting 20 health when he's getting those. Uh, so he got bloodthirsted for 20. Um, healed by himself for 20 with a bloodthirst. Yep, 20, 20. Removed a flurry. That's fine. That doesn't affect health. War stomp doesn't affect health. Swing damage landed. So he got hit for 551 and 487. Wait a minute. When was that? What? No, he did that damage. Sorry. Ugh. Uh, removed Wind Fury Totem. Swing damage. He dealt damage. Extra attacks. It's a proc of Wind Fury. Uh, removed Holy Strength. Uh, that's a uh, Crusader proc, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Heal self for 75 to 125. Ooh. Oh, but that's for 15 seconds. So that would have happened way before any of this stuff happened. Uh, aura removed. Wind Fury Totem. Blood for Thirst. Um, heal. So you got healed for 20. Disease Cloud for uh, 255 damage, which is this. Then there should be 20 heals. There's a periodic damage. That's him doing damage. Him doing damage. Here's a heal. We have a heal. 20. 20. Swing damage. That's him doing damage. So that's two of the 20s accounted for. Um... There's another 20. Energize. Aura applied. There's the bloodthirst proccing. Deep wound was removed from... Okay, so his deep wound faded. Spell damage was done by him. Uh, bloodthirst procced. Or was cast. Damage landed. Energize, uh, refresh, removed ancestral fortitude. Uh, okay, armor value from items. Swing damage landed. Flurry. Uh, healed for 121 from a holy strength. So that's Crusader proccing. Yeah, and he's at full health, right? Yeah, and that overhealed. So I don't understand how basically there's a discrepancy in the amount of health that he has. Um, unless he did a weapon swap, because I guess that's not something that you'd see here. Maybe he swapped weapons. Um, he got hit fucking hard. Hmm. Dot star 255. Okay. So this is the start of damage being taken by him. So he takes a 255. Um, Yeah. 
Maybe there's a bug in uh, the logs. Martibo, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Um. What the fuck? So here's, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I think, so look at this. The unmitigated damage, uh, I guess for a lot of these is for disease cloud. Disease cloud, what is going on with that? Something is happening there, and don't know what it is. Um, okay. I think there's a chance that there's either a bug in the logging or in the game itself. Uh, let's look at... Um, well, I have overhealed. Oh, that's moose. I don't want moose. I want to edit this. And I want to do... Um, this is gonna be the unmitigated damage. So damage unmitigated. And I have a hunch that uh, he's not actually taking the mitigated damage. He's taking the unmitigated damage. Um, okay, so here we go. Here is the discrepancy. And the discrepancy that we have in his health, uh, 1632 and 1404, 228. So let's see. If the difference between, so this was a, a strike, and that one's fine. I think something is fucked with the spell damage mitigation. So let's do 228. We're going to, uh, let's do 255 minus 232. That's 23. Um, 1159 minus 1054. I think that's a real hit. So I'm going to, like, store that off to the side. Um... Then we have a 261 minus a 237, it's 24, that gets us to 47. Uh, that one's, I think, fine. This one, uh, 279 and a 254. Subtract those, 25. And then this one, did we do this one? One, two, three of the small ones, this one. Add those together, that's 177. No, still doesn't make sense. Um, I don't get it. <laughs> I have no idea where that damage is coming from. Uh, I mean, the the real problem is they had uh, moose. Is I print the overheal, so um, they had more health than I expected them to have. And I don't, I don't understand how. Like there's a discrepancy of 228. If I subtract off that 177, there's a discrepancy of 51. Um, and I think I did the math right. It was just those three, those four values. Um, I don't get it. Overheal zero. So you have a set at 235. 235, and we subtract off 1159. That gets us to nine. Oops. Uh, 235 plus that, uh, 1394. Yep. Heal, hit, heal, big hit, another hit, and then a shit ton of heals landing. Bunch of chain heals. Yeah, two chain heals got batched. Two chain heals we got batched again. I actually was part of this batch. So here's one, here's another, and then I was in this. Um... I don't know where that 200 damage difference comes from. Like...
Unless he, like, just lost a buff. Um, not seeing it. What happens directly after here? Uh, looks like a cast succeeds. A fla a two flash heals come in at the same time. Uh, batched, both overhealing fully. Well, they haven't hit yet. Spell heal. Yeah, I, I don't know. And these are like pretty uh, decently later. I don't know where those discrepancies are coming from, to be honest. Um, that's kind of weird. I don't like that. And there's another one here. This one's even bigger. Uh, and it's... That's the overheal. And it's the same thing. It's... It feels like there's something related with the, um, it feels like there's something related with this unmitigated damage being lower than the damage actually taken. Let's find that first overheal. Okay, um, here he's overhealed, so he's got full health. We know he's got full health. Um... 20, 30, all overheals. And it's been a it's been more than a batch time. So then he starts taking damage. And once again, there's a discrepancy. Let's so let's figure this discrepancy out. So 332 minus 302. Um, we've got a 410 minus 373. We've got a 372 minus 338. Uh, a 307 minus 372. So that one, there's no discrepancy. And that gets us to 101. And we have a discrepancy of 736 minus 393. 343. Now, Renew's hit for close to that. Um, uh, 736 by 393. 343. He's, he's definitely full health. And a lot of... Time goes by. Oh, it's it's regen. It's passive regen is what it is. It's passive regen. Um. That sucks. Um. Yeah, so he took, this is basically when, uh, no, there's an overheal. Mm, maybe it's not passive regen, because this is, he was overhealed here. How is there that big of a discrepancy? An overheal of 736. Mm. And... Is gaming running Windows? It is not. It's running uh, Gen 2. Um... Like, he's full health. What the fuck? Let's see. He took 307. 307 damage. And then he took 270 damage. Which is 577. And he got healed... For 870. Which is 293 over healing... No, it, it does add up. What the fuck? Um, 
2020, 2020. Yeah, that, no, what, uh, what? Wait, am I doing something really stupid? Am I looking at like the inverse of something? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Overhealed, he's full health. That was a long time ago. There's no batching that we have to think about in this. Takes 307 damage. He's missing 307 health. He heals for 20, he heals for 20, he heals for 20. And that looks good, so 20, 20, 20. Is that 247? He then takes a 270 damage hit, uh, which puts him at 517 health down. Heals for 20, heals for 20, he's at 477. And then he gets healed, so he has 477 health. He gets healed for 870. And the difference between that is 393, which is this. Uh, yeah, and that's what I say it is. But the overhealing that actually happened was 736. So the math adds up to the 393, because that's the math that I do, and that makes sense. Overhealed for 736. And we expect them to be overhealed. And there's no other heals that even happen in this time frame. Like, okay, 372, 327. 20, 20, 20, 20. It's just 100. Hmm. Okay. Um, if advanced units GUID uh, is equal to this, print HP update to this. Uh, current HP. Ten dot three. Elapsed. Okay, so now we're gonna get to see what his health is at. Um, and the one that we're looking at, this is the one that's interesting. Flash heal updated to 100%. Um, took some damage. Then he healed. Healed healed what the fuck <laughs> what the fuck uh you're gonna look for this dot star uh 372 comma um so 307 372 should be the only occurrence yeah it's this so and this is at is it No. Uh, sorry. We want this. Um. What? Maybe I got this mixed up. Let's just look for a 370, uh, 372. Okay, um. I expect to see this on a 100 millisecond boundary. Unless, for some reason, our millisecond boundaries are not accurate. But I don't know why we'd have a loss. Like a timing loss at this phase. Um, he is an E5, right? He's FE5, yeah. Uh, 370... 372, that's unmitigated. 307. There is damage being done to him and he is being updated to 
What health? 96 after that. Why is our time different? Like, I'm pretty sure this is the event. Why is that time different? Oh, um, because it's, sorry, it's a delta. These are, th this is uptime. Okay, that's fine then. Um, uh, okay, so HP update, 100%. Like, dude's definitely healed up. He takes some damage. He's at 95%. And that is the 372 that he takes right here. Uh, actually, a 372, 338. So, is that the start? No, he gets overhealed. Sorry, this is the one that I want. I want the 307, 372, because this is the one. He was overhealed before then. He was overhealed a long time ago. Uh, so, he's definitely at 100% health. Then, he takes 307 damage here. Cool. I agree with that. Um, there's the 307. This is the next thing. He does a spell cast for Bloodthirst, and there's an update here that he now has 97% health. So how much time has passed? F 477 milliseconds has passed, and he gained 1% health. Maybe that's just a weird rounding error. But then he ticks for 20 from a bloodthirst, and now he's at 98%. Ticks again, 98%. What is that coming from? Like, is that seriously just passive regen? I don't think so. That's. I guess it's bursty. Um, what is the, like... HP per five that you're regening. Um, so it, let's let's think about it. Seven hundred thirty-six minus three hundred ninety-three. Three hundred forty-three health. He gained three hundred forty-three health somehow, and we have no idea how. Now the time delta is a ninety-four two zero nine ninety-four point two zero nine, and he was overhealed he was full health uh at 63 oh that was a long time ago no he took his first damage at 84 100 so 10 in 10 seconds he gained he was gaining 34 health per second 34 health per second which is 170 health per five. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand how he got that much health that fast. And he definitely was getting health, right? Like, he took damage... He was at 96%. He went to 97%. He went to from 96% to 98%. In and we have 20 healing on the record. So let's imagine. Let's imagine he went from 96.999% to 98 flat. So basically he gained 1%. So 0.01. And we see him healing for 20 health. So that would mean he has 2,000 health. <laughs> but then this tick of 20 does not put him over, and this tick of 20 doesn't give him another percent. So we see that he can heal for 40, and he doesn't even gain 1% health. But then here, we see, within a matter of 1.195 seconds, he gains between 1% to 2% health, and we have him on record for gaining 20 health. I, like, I don't understand how that's possible. Like, let's imagine he's, he's a warrior. He probably has, we had uh, at this stage, 
We had world buffs. He probably has minimum 5,000 health, probably 6,500 health, right? So like 0.01 would be 65 healing per, per percent. Lost a debuff? Nope. There's no record of anything happening in there. Nothing. Is passive health uh, ticks every second? It's every five seconds. Or it's like every three, or every like two and a half or every three seconds um, are the ticks. Um, and even then, he wouldn't have ticked for that. That would be an insane MP5. Like, he would have been, he would have had like, uh, not MP5, but health per five. It'd be like 180 health per five. But these are rare events, right? And that's what's really interesting about this. Look, look, at, look at how often the moose events happen. Uh, 3325. 3326. So this was about 100 seconds later. 333. 3, 3. So this was like 400 seconds later. These, these are not happening frequently. Now, this guy isn't a tank. Um... Let's throw in a tank here. Let's go find a nut here. Um, switch to these. Just like a bunch of debug stuff, so it doesn't really matter that we're... Not using a variable for those, don't really care. And then this is notch. Let's see how often this happens on a tank. How often there's a massive discrepancy on a tank. Uh, 332449. Yeah, uh, fucking 200 seconds later. There's two. There's two occurrences. There's two occurrences on the main tank of a discrepancy. So it's not a common thing. It's it's like there's something that's being omit from the logs. Uh, whether it's like a trinket being triggered, maybe. Is it a trinket? Um, blue dragon. There's blue dragon proccing. Let's look at um, uh, Zandalarian. Hero Charm. Okay, let me find what spell that applies. I think I, I don't know the... Um, Xandalarian Hero Charm. Okay, it applies Unstable Power. Yeah, and that's right there. Yep. Uh, that's applying all the doses. Um... That's using a trinket. So, like, I feel like I'd see trinket usages, too. I have, I don't get it. I don't get it. It makes no sense. This happens very rarely. Very rarely. Um... I don't know. It probably doesn't really matter if it if it happens that rarely. Like worst case scenario, I think I did an extra four hundred healing every minute, which is like what is that? Uh, four hundred by sixty? Yeah, six healing a second. That's not really going to dramatically affect my theory crafting. Um, and this has happened. This happened twice. There are two discrepancies that are like five hundred health on the main tank over the course of a two hour raid. Uh, so ultimately, it's like less than. 0.1 percent heal, point uh, one healing per second, uh, which is like below one percent. Um, so I just I don't quite understand why that's happening though. But I I think we're tracking relatively decently uh, for health, so I think we're okay. 
So let's just, we'll get rid of these things. Uh, if we overhealed our target, then we know they're at max health and not missing anything. And get rid of this. And HP updates. Um, actually, I want... Which ones do I want? I don't want moose. Okay. So we're looking at Nutch. Uh, this is just, like, checking on stuff. And now we're just looking at, basically, the health missing and elapsed. So we, we're kind of just zooming in to see how much health they have um, at all times. And we can get rid of this print. So now this is just going to be basically the main tank's uh, health missing over time. Um, okay, good. Good. Uh, and these stats are actually being kept for everyone. Uh, they're being tracked for everyone, but we're only looking at the main tank right now. So if I were to put this to a log, and then plot dot plot, and then this is not health percent, but this is health missing, and we can kind of take a look at this, and we can see them like getting hit and getting healed up, and this looks pretty decent. We see a lot of the bashing stuff in here. Um, Health 20. Ooh. Wait. Oh, uh, it's due to order of ops? No. If overhealed is greater than zero. Yeah, I, I think, like, it's... Like, here... Yeah, here they're healed to, like, 5,000 health. Um, but this is probably, I bet this is, they stepped into, um, this is, they probably stepped into, um, poison and lost half their health and then they got healed up. And then, uh, once they got healed back to full, I then was able to recognize they're at full health and reset that back. Okay. So I think that's fine. Um, yeah, these are probably all, like, hopping in poison. Uh, everything else looks pretty stable here. There's a couple situations where things go over, which I don't like to see. Um, but, okay, so, like, here is... Damn. How long is this time frame? It's about a second, couple seconds, okay. It's gonna be really hard to understand this. Uh, like, I think this will just kind of require reverse engineering how batching works. Um, this is like pretty bad. <laughs> um, Like, I, I, I just don't, I, I, what is this? I don't know what these are, these big troughs. What would that be? It's for a long time. It's like 10, 20 minutes. I don't know what that is. Um, ah, that is a wipe. That's us wiped and running back. So this is the time, like, running back, doing a fight, running back, doing a fight, running back, doing a fight. So, like, this will be... Um, this will be an attempt on, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, shit. Who do we wipe on a billion times? Thaddeus. So we had three wipes on Thaddeus, right? So if we look, uh, this is probably he died 
and then we got him back up, probably after a fight. We're moving to the like next fight. Uh, oh yeah, this is us waiting for Thaddeus. This is kind of explaining the fight. This might be that as well. Uh, and this is probably running back after Thaddeus. Uh, the first wipe, the second wipe, the third wipe, Spider Wing, uh, and then a wipe on. Uh, did we wipe twice on Magna? No, I don't know what this would be. Honestly, th yeah, this is probably when we wiped and just like this is like after raid was done. Um, hmm. So this is going to be, this is definitely the first attempt, I think. And yeah, time-wise, this, this looks about right. Um, yeah, I want to look at patchwork. So this is patchwork right here. It's pretty obvious that this is patchwork. Um... Let's see. Let's just look at the duration of this fight. So this was um, uh, three, three, four, one, four, five, and then this was uh, three, 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 nine, ten. Two hundred thirty-five seconds divided by sixty is three point nine one. Yeah, that's this is patchwork, right? So this is patchwork. We see like a bunch of the hateful strikes and shit. Um, oh, this is really cool. Um, Nice. Let's take a look at like something like this. So there's basically for like a fight like this on Patrick, there's like no time for reaction time, which is kind of funny. Um, but like, yeah, let's see like what these windows are here. Like a couple heels go off. This is. Yeah, this is like half a second missing health. I really wish I could see these in a, a better thing. We should probably just like filter these for the fight. I don't know. Um, let me see if I can compute approximately uh, what everyone's health was like. Um, I don't know how I'd display that. I kind of need a better uh, way to display that. Um, Hmm. Let me start with this. Uh, if it's patchwork, then what I want to do is uh, start is equal to this. I'm going to latch start. So start will be max. And then here I'll say start is equal to... Uh, uh, is equal to time. Okay, so when Patrick starts, I will start a timer. And then let's see what happens here. Uh, these are going to be like fucked. Um, yeah, we're going to have like weird times. And then the times will get short. And this is Patrick starting. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically say uh, these prints doing on heels. I'll basically say if. Start is not equal to uh, standard i64 max. And I could use none, but I'm just hacking this in here quick just to see. So this, oh yeah, and then when Patrick ends, uh, start is standard i64 max. Okay, so basically, this will probably only include Patrick now, yeah. All right, so this is only Patrick, and hopefully this makes the data a little bit better. Yeah, I have more sig figs on stuff, okay. Nice, nice, but this is Patrick on one of the tanks. Um, what I could do is, hmm. I kinda need to make like raid frames, to be honest, if I really wanna like look at things. What mouse are you using? It's a Logitech G600. I only use it for a while. Um, put 
But yeah, let's look at these heals here. God, that's a long time to not be full health. Um, but a lot of these heals were happening... Like, how big is this healing window here? 673 to... Okay, so 400 milliseconds. But, like, you're not going to be able to cast a heal. Um, and I think this is what's really interesting to me, is, like... I think what I want to do on this is... Um... I think I want to do like frequency analysis on this to determine the, uh, I want to determine the, like, I basically want to figure out the frequency of damage events. And I can do that relatively easily by, uh, let's see, if I only print the damage, um, this is just going to be kind of useless information. This is just going to update the graph only when they take damage, but it'll still look the same. Um, yeah. So this doesn't show heals. This only shows, like, damage events. Um, but what I think I want to do is... Uh, Uh, let me mute. FF is bool, uh, is false. And then, um, FF is equal to not FF. And then let's just try this. I, I have a, I have a hypothesis here. Uh, FF as U8. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, um, this isn't going to work. Uh, it's going to look like shit. Uh, let's do this. Only on them. And only on them during this. So damage events that are occurring to the player that we're tracking, we will invert a Boolean value. Okay. So then this is basically showing me, like... Um, do I have audacity? Um, what I can do is, I think I can use audacity to do a Fourier transform on this. I just need to turn this into an audio file, uh, which should be pretty easy to do. Import, uh, let's see, imports raw data. Let's just see. Um, little Indian, 8-bit PCM, one channel, sample rates. Oh, making the sample rate here will be tough. Shit. Um, it's... <sighs> It's got to be a better way, because I can't. I can't really use a sample rate with this. I mean, I could. I could just. Hmm. I don't have a great way to do that. Um, I could probably convert that. I actually don't even know if Audacity will really do a good job of uh, low frequency stuff. Let me see. I might have to just do my own thing. Uh, let's see if Audacity, let's see. Plot spectrum. Yeah, so Audacity is just not going to go below. It's going to start at like 10 hertz anyways. Yeah, okay, so that's not going to be useful for us anyways. Um, okay. Um, well, we could... We could just squish the time domain and then... Uh, 
Yeah, shift the frequency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Um. Because these are all the same. 361 to 170. Uh, 170 to 361. Uh, is that 1.191 seconds? Yeah. Add that. Or 809. And then this is a 995. And this was the 161. That's an 834. Like, there, there is a, a regular thing here. And if, as a healer, I could find these... Um, let's just do this. Let's plot this. Okay. Um, I've been plot to plot. Uh, set X range uh, negative uh, 0.5 to 1.5. I just want to... Oops. Uh, sorry, Y range. So, okay, I'm going to do something pretty cool here. Um, maybe, uh, let's do this. Oh yeah. And I'm going to do uh, FF. Yeah, we'll just do this. If FF, um, one else, negative one. All right, good, 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 good. Okay, negative one point five to one point five. All right, didn't want to do that. Uh, plot. Okay, sweet. So there's our data. So what I can do is I can figure out, um, uh, sine. I guess we are in, okay, let's try this. Uh, how do I get pi in here? Can I do pi? Can I just do this? This is a thing, it's pi valid. Uh, oops, sine pi. Nice, okay, good. Um, sine, I'm gonna do a 2.5. Uh, pi, we basically want each cycle to be, uh, let's try this. Is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. And then I need X. Jesus Christ, can you plot? Um, that is not what I wanted though. And I closed the wrong window. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, wow, theory, uh, whoops. Well, theory, log parser, plot, and I want uh, blah, 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 blah. I need to set the samples, set samples. Yeah, let's go back to this. Set samples, many. Many samples. Okay, that looks better. Is that the same formula I had? Um, so, yeah. Huh, nice, I did the math right. Okay, sweet. Um, so basically, uh, let's do cosine. Um, this is basically, the, the green line is the frequency of which I can land a heal. So what I could actually do is try to determine the best time to land heals and see if there's like, like, like I see shit like this. <laughs> um, 
And this is interesting because like this would theoretically be a heal that would happen right before damage is taken. And then this would be a heal that happens right after damage is taken. So what I want to do is figure out the amount of delay that I want to have between my heals to maximize. So like I can, the, the fastest I can do heals, the fastest I can do heals is every 2.5 seconds. So what I want to do is figure out, is there something I can do where instead of doing a heal every 2.5 seconds, I do a heal every 2.6 seconds, and that leads to me like landing heals more frequently right after damage is taken. <laughs> like that's, this is, this, is, this is why, this is why I did this. This is why I made this tool so I can parse these logs, is because now I can basically simulate what I could have done. Last time I used GNU plot as way better smoothing. It, it depends on the, on the samples that you have. But yeah. Um... That's crazy. It looks like if they're taking hatefuls every time, I'm always in a good window. So like, um, so like, here's an instance of two damage instances occurring before I uh, before I could make a heal. Um, here's two heals that are landing. Those are that's an overheal, right? That's just deleting my mana. Um, Hmm. Honestly, just spamming heals here, it seems like it's pretty hard to do better than that. Um, all right, I'll be right back. All right, um, let's see, um, let's 
so... All right, I'm gonna do uh, one really quick simulation. So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, process this information. So this is basically tracking the health missing and all of this information. Cool, whatever, whatever, who fucking cares? Um, so I know, at all times I know the health of everyone. Okay, cool, nice. Um, Don't care. Uh, if they were overhealed, set their uh, health to max. Um, all right, so what is the logic that we're doing? Counters, start and end. Uh, spell heal, oh, this is for tracking like how much healing people did. Don't give a shit. Um, healers, gone, okay. Healer. B tree map, we do want B tree map. Okay, so this is going to, we're gonna parse a combat log, we're gonna go through everything, uh, and, uh, yeah, we're just gonna do one fight for now. She should be able to process all the data. Uh, 2079, healers, clear, okay, yep, bye. So at the start of patchwork, we start it. At the end of patchwork, we set the end. Okay, so, and we only have one patchwork in here, so it's fine. Wait. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. There might be multiple patchworks in here. Um, actually, there probably are. So, um, if someone died, they're not missing any health. If, uh, Let's see, handle damage. If damage was taken, subtract that away. Uh, if they were healed, add that back in. If they were overhealed, set it to zero. If, uh, we can just do this for everyone, doesn't matter. So, update the last known health. Um, so basically, every time that we every time we get a record that contains the HP percentage, then update that. If they are at 100%, then set them to missing no health. Um, okay, so this is going to track basically approximately how much health people are missing, and it seems pretty accurate. We did some decent tests with that. So now, uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, basically turn this into a... Uh, so this is go through all events, and... Effectively, what I want to do here is, well, let's make sure there's only one patchwork. Oh, yeah, let's just do this. Let's just break. All right, that is guaranteed that there's only one patchwork, because we just, we just break. Um, well, that's not true, because the first one might not have happened. So, uh, we'll just do this. Let mute encounter. Mm. What I want to do is I want to have uh, every millisecond... I want to have the health of the, every, yeah. So let's just do this. Eh, start, yeah, I want the start of the fight. We'll say this is none for now. Okay, and then we're gonna set patchwork to, uh, start is sometime. I'm, I'm trying to make this code decent now because I'm actually going to do something uh, relevant. And then this is going to be uh, just break. Okay. And then uh, what I want to do is handle this, update percent HPs. Uh, okay, let's just do this. We'll put this at the top. So handle deaths. Um... I guess we can do this in here. Uh, if it is a unit died, then we can uh, remove player because they are dead. We have no idea. Yep, okay. So handle damage, handle healing, handle percent HPs. Okay, so at the end of each of these phases, we want to update our records. And what we want to do is uh, let let me, last event is none. 
And what I'm going to do is every millisecond, I'm going to make a copy of the missing uh, data. So we'll do last event is equal to some uh, time. And then what I can do is if... Um, okay, so we'll do uh, let mute time line is equal to a vec new and I think every millisecond we're gonna update that maybe if um so we're gonna do uh, timeline dot push missing uh, and then we'll we'll clone it so that is the amount of health that is missing from everyone. So we're tracking that, and then, uh, okay. So, now, uh, for int in timeline, uh, print int.len. This is basically the, the number of players that we have health of, and it's going to just print for each of the, this is going to push for every event. Um, and what I want to do is I think I actually want to do an insert, don't I? Yeah, I think it's better to just do a B tree map and then instead of this last event shit, I was thinking about turning it into uh, sample based data. Mm, do I want to though? I don't know. I guess you just fill in the gaps with the previous thing. So we'll, we'll start with a, 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 a B tree map here. So we're gonna start with, uh, start some, let, uh, if let some, Elapsed is equal to time. Uh, oops, we want to do a uh, start time map x and then uh, time minus x. Okay, so if some time has elapsed, then what we're going to do is um, timeline dot insert elapsed missing.clone, and then this, well now for every millisecond, so this is uh, uh, time entry in timeline, we'll have a millisecond and the entry. Okay, so start time, start. All right, so now this will give us uh, not what I was expecting. Start is time. Uh, there must be multiple Patrick's in here. Yeah, there are definitely going to be multiple Patrick's, I guess. Um, okay, so on an encounter start, uh, timeline clear. And that's fine. <laughs> this will now only record the last one. Um, although that's not good. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Fuck, dude. Uh. Why is that time not getting reset? Encounter end, break, uh, start, some time. Timeline, clear. How are there things? Oh, that's 343 seconds. Oh, jeez. Okay, yeah, all right, it's fine. Uh, uh, this is in milliseconds, not, okay. All right, so uh, Vim Dash. So that is the health of everyone, and what I'm gonna do is, when the encounter starts, I'm gonna do like uh, percent HP clear, 
and uh, missing clear. We're just gonna reset all of the state, right? Yeah, this is all of our state, we delete all state. So when a Patrick fight starts, delete everything. That means like we won't necessarily have some things carry over uh, from before the fight, like people who are topped up to full, but that's fine. Uh, we'll get pinged when they're full. If they're at full health, it'll be obvious the second they cast their first spell. So this is one second in. We have four people that we know how much health they have, and it kind of goes on throughout the fight. Uh, we learn more and more um, how many people have health, and that drops off at the end, and that's kind of weird. Um... Missing clone. Um, the only way that can happen is if people died, and I don't think anyone died. So that's weird. Um, this is already open source? No, I don't plan to open source this. Um, why does that drop off at the end? Like, why does that even happen? Um, remove if someone died. Okay, uh, print died. But I don't think anyone died. Unless this was the first attempt. Oh yeah, people died. Wait, what? That's other shit. Um, but yeah, no one died during this fight. Yeah, no one died during the fight. Okay, that's what I expected. So how would people get removed from missing? Um, timeline clear, percent HP clear, missing clear, start clear. And I am logging. Break. So at the end of the fight. Uh, print, just EE and counter end. Let's just see what happens here. Um, why is there no encounter end? Okay, counter end at the start. Oh, and then we print the data. Okay, um, makes sense. Why would that number decrease? Insert. This is the only way things can get removed, is if there's deaths. Oh, does that make sense? Um. If start is sum. Print. I bet these are like totems, or or like uh, warlock pets or hunter pets or something. So who died? So there are deaths that happen here. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go to the top. So what do we have? Well, these were on actual attempts on... Was this a downing... I don't know if this is the first Patrick fight or not. Um... Counter... And... Dot start patch. Okay, there are a couple in counter and Patrick's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then there's a zero. I think there is something that tells me whether or not uh, it was a clear. Um, yeah, this value that's unknown for an encounter end, uh, for a non-wipe, it's zero, and for a wipe, 
or for a for a wipe it's zero, for a non wipe is one. Um, and I would imagine that's what that is then. Encounter end dot star zero new line. Okay, so these are wipes. Patrick wipe, Patrick wipe, Patrick wipe. Uh, hey, uh, Hagen the unclean wipe. A uh, Thaddeus wipe. Yep. Uh, there should be three of these. One, two, three. Oh, just two of those. Okay. Uh, I probably uh, release spirit. So I probably didn't see the end of that fight. Um, cause here's another Thaddeus encounter. Yeah, let's look. We have a Thaddeus with no end. Okay. So um, I do think that's what that last thing means. So this is... Um, um, I'm just going to say uh, encounter end. And this is uh, seems to be zero on a wipe and a one on a kill. So what we can do is say uh, kill if if kill is not equal to zero and that, then we'll break, uh, which is going to cause the last thing to get written out. 2044, okay. Uh, that. Oops. Unknown at 1659. Uh, kill is unknown is not equal to zero. Let's just do that. Son of a bitch. Uh, 2045, yeah. If kill, and it was Patrick, okay? I do need to deref that. If it was a kill and the encounter was Patrick, then blah, blah, blah. And now this will parse all the way through, and we should see, yeah. Okay, so nothing drops off at the end here. It looks like there is, like, one death, and that death is very likely, uh, yeah, I'm seeing no one dropping off. So what I want to do is basically, this is all the deaths, not just the deaths during this fight, because I don't bookend it, because I'm lazy. Uh, base. We'll just look at base from the back. And there's going to be a couple things that died, uh, and they're likely pets. Um, so Patrick died. Uh, oh. Are these deaths? This is probably beforehand. Unless people died during this, maybe. I, don't, I didn't think people died during this. Um, yeah, I don't see any deaths. Yeah, no deaths. Okay. Um, all right. Good. So, probably a couple of units died, and those are probably... Hmm. I actually don't know, to be honest. I don't know what would cause that number to go down. What the fuck? Um... Come on. 51, so it stays at 51. Yeah, what the fuck? Who dies? Uh, print, start, encounter, okay, so that, there you go, so that's the start of the encounter, let's see, uh, start encounter, one, two, so Patrick died. Yep, that makes sense. And Shelza and Uller, they're both hunters. I'm curious if these are pets that are dying and not them, because th I don't think they died. I, I Like, I don't think they, I don't think, like, Warcraft Log so shows no deaths. 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't quite understand that to be honest. Okay. All right. So now we can go through uh, and look at basically everyone's health for each millisecond. So um, now I track those by GUID. Uh, and do I have to? Yeah, let's just do this. Let mute uh, GUID to name b tree map new and then we're just gonna do this on every uh was it basic parameters uh if let sum uh base is equal to event base parameters i think i called it base yes i did okay so this is just uh uh, update uh, GUID databases, and we'll just do uh, GUID to name dot insert hmm. if I don't want to do this. Um, for GUID name in uh. I guess I can do a tuple of base dot source dest good name. Okay. Uh, source dot good uh, source dot name. Uh, is this equal to this? This. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, come on. Um, S, uh, source, desk, G. Okay, so these are names. Uh, and names, then uh, if GUID to name contains GUID, uh, if it does not contain GUID, then we want to insert GUID.clone. Eh, I guess we don't need to uh, clone those. So we probably don't even want to do contains then because it's just going to slow it down, to be honest. Um, ord, no ord for GUID. Let's get those going. Uh, partial ord, ord, partial eq, eq, and let's get a clone here. Okay, uh, 2047 contains, that's supposed to be contains key. Uh, if it doesn't contain the GUID, and we're just gonna insert it because we're using references, so we should be fine here. Um, yeah, let's put refs on all of these. And that should be better. Oh, come on. Oh, uh, I think that, Really? Uh, let's rest that. Yep, so those are already sliced up. Yeah, that would make sense. Cargo check. Um, There's a move because GUID doesn't implement copy. Yeah, and these should be refs. Right? And those should be refs, yup. I don't understand. Does base parameters clone? No, it returns a ref. What the f um temporary value. It doesn't like those references. That's kinda weird. Uh, so these are GUIDs. 
I can't save ref there, can I? No. I mean, I can just clone them. I don't give a shit, but... Feel like I don't have to. Um... No, because the event... No, the event should be in our log. Um... Read at 2049. Names is a temporary. Freed while still in use. Ah, uh, I know why. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's do this. So this won't work. Um. Good. I think, yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. That's what I thought. Um, it, it was an issue with, uh, this was a ref, and it was it was a ref to the reference in the slice. Okay, that makes sense. So, update good databases, and now what I can do is, um, let's just do this, uh, for good missing in and uh, if Gwid starts with player, then print the name of the player and the health that they're missing. And then this will be uh, whatever the name of that database is. Gwid to name. Good name. Uh, Gwid. I think that's already a ref, and then, oops, good to name, and then the missing. So this should print, okay, something like that. Borrow string, mm-hmm. Oh. Uh. Ref string. Are those refs? Expected ref found. Oh, I have a string. Cause I saved the dot zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, sweet. Then I think we should be fine there. Expected a reference to a grid. And this is gonna have lifetime issues for these. Yeah. Uh, Seventy-three, and we have another dot zero that we can get rid of. Twenty eighty, get rid of this dot zero as well. All right. We were just too lazy to implement those things on GUID. Uh, if GUID dot zero starts with, okay. Now, this should basically tell me the health of everyone in every... Basically, at the end of every millisecond, this will tell me the health missing from people. Um, and I don't know if I want to do it at the first... Mil the start of the millisecond or at the end of the millisecond. But right now, basically, for every millisecond, I save the missing health database. Uh, and this means I keep replace since I process sequentially, this means I end up replacing it. If I get the same event a couple milliseconds in a row, I'll just keep replacing it. But I think this is fine. Okay. So, in very slow motion, I should be able to see, basically, yeah, here we go. So there's the first damage being taken. So this is, yeah, so 3980 milliseconds, nothing, and then 3981 milliseconds, the first damage occurred. At 4000, the damage has stayed the same. Uh, uh, Kajin took a big hit. Um, 
No one has gotten a heal yet. No one has gotten a heal yet. Okay, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> this is really cool. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I like this. Nuts took another hit. It's, it's in super slow motion because no one has had time to cast a heal yet. Yep, and Nutch got his first heal. And he took another hit. One millisecond after getting healed, he took another hit. And then a heals are gonna start rolling in. Kajin got a heal. This is good, I like this. Uh, let's just do this. Uh, if missing is greater than zero. Oops, uh... Well, that's never gonna happen. Um... If missing is, uh, I think, uh, is it greater than zero? I can't remember if it's... Missing... Yeah, so, m that's not what I wanna do. Uh, missing... If it's less than zero, if they are missing health... <laughs> Uh, which I should rename that, because it's confusing. Okay, here we go. So now I can just scroll through and I can see basically everyone's health. Three people taking damage, I can see them getting healed, I can see them getting healed to full. Um, like here, only Nutch had missing health. Okay, sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. There might be a fundamentally hard problem here. You're analyzing an action log for a network client? Uh, no, I'm not. So, like, I'm getting the data as it's processed by the server. So I, I get it in the correct order. Um, that is the point of batching, is that you collect all of the things and then you report out the events, which uh, in which order they happened. Yeah. Yeah, the combat log is like, you're doing things client-side, and then the combat log is just what the server is telling you happened. And the server is the, basically telling you what truly happened. So this log only contains the server's perspective of what happened. It has no client-side information of what happened. So like client-side, it thought I probably healed people hundreds of milliseconds before I did. Uh, but I am looking at basically the, the record from the server. Then you should know the batch size or events. Uh, like, kind of. I mean, we don't know how batching works. Uh, and I think there are exceptions to batching. So, all right, let's see here. So, um, this is so cool. I can see everyone's health. Yeah, at the end I started going ham, I started raid healing, topping people up. Oh, this is awesome. This is sweet. Yeah, you can't get this in Warcraft logs. They don't they don't have this info on Warcraft logs. Mm. Didn't play Mac uh much back in the day. Ooh, what is this? EQ. Oh. Shit. Um, so what do I want to do with this? I think what I might do is break this into every... So, like, I want to make a dictionary or a, a, an array or a vector, whatever you want to call it, uh, where every millisecond has this data, where I basically copy the data from the previous millisecond if no new data has happened. Because uh, I think that makes it easier to index and then basically simulate healing. Um, so, 
this is basically where I wanted to get. Like, I have, this is the, basically, this is the only information I care about in here. I don't care about, like, anything other than the amount of health people are missing. As a healer, there's literally nothing that matters other than the amount of health that people are missing. And, of course, like, fucking mechanics. But, doesn't matter. Um, so, uh... For a fight like Patchwork, it's super easy because there's literally nothing that happens and I can heal the entire fight and there's no mechanics to dodge. And thus, I can basically determine the maximum amount of healing I could have had. So, let's see. Um... I'm curious. Uh... So, I think I can actually, uh... Beach tree maps, I think, have a way to get the, like, nearest. Or, like, uh, I think you can find... What is it that you can do? Uh, fuck. Range. Double-ended iterator over a sub-range. Um... Yeah, because it, it returns a double-ended iterator. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, um, what I can do is, I guess, like, all right, here's what I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a healer that doesn't exist. Uh, let mute healing is equal to zero. And then, uh, let mute spell, I'm just gonna say my, my healing, I, I just do a, a thousand healing every time I heal. So what I can do is I can go through, um, so I can get, I guess the full range. Can I just do a next back on the whole thing? Or like pop, pop last? Ooh, peak last? Is there a peak last? Last? Last, whoa, last key value, that's fucking cool. Last entry, uh, keys, is this double-ended? Yes, it is. So I can do uh, keys dot uh, pop, or next back. Okay, so duration is equal to the timeline dot keys dot uh, next back, right? Obviously, I'm going to need to unwrap that, but that's fine. So, this is basically going to tell me the last key, and the last key is going to be the time of the fight, right? Or the last time. Uh, ooh. Hmm. Okay, and, uh, ooh. Ooh, we can do this thing now. Uh, ref quid. Oh fuck. We fucked it up. Uh Can I just do that? Expected that, found reference that. Cuz that entry should be a reference, right? I don't think that. Yeah, that's gonna fuck it. Um What? Expected tuple. Found reference. And then mark that as a ref. What? What is int? Yeah, it's a uh, time int, which is. Oh, uh, oh, this is another dictionary. Whoops. Whoops-a-daisy. Uh, dot iter. We'll just dot iter this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I, bro I broke a bunch of weird stuff. Um, so then in this situation, expected tuple. Oh, yeah, it's already, uh, yeah, it's this. 
Yep, and I don't need iter, but whatever. Okay, um... Okay, uh... I forgot that was a dictionary. And fight was this. Yep, that's the last uh, duration. So what I'm going to do is for each millisecond in 0 to duration, um, for uh, milliseconds, we'll just say ms in this. So this is uh, go through each millisecond of a fight. And then what we're going to do, uh, this is milliseconds. I technically don't even need this shit. Um, T112. So, there's a couple things that I'm gonna do that I think are gonna be fun. Uh, oh, ref, bam. So, what I can do is go through every single millisecond of the fight, um, let status is equal to uh, timeline.range uh, up to and inclusive of ms dot uh, next back unwrap something like that let's just see I don't know if that's gonna panic or not sweet didn't so this should uh, get the current state of the raid right so this should uh, basically get the most recent thing up to and including uh, ms Okay. Um, so, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to simulate uh, z having instantaneous reaction time, uh, what it does. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, let mute. Uh, cast, um, complete is none. Okay, uh, let's just do this. So, I uh, get the duration of the fight in milliseconds. This is, uh, a cumulative amount of healing. This is, uh, tracks the uh, future time when the uh, heal will complete uh, and against uh, which targets. Okay, so this is gonna be an option which will contain a ref grid, which is the target and then the time in milliseconds of when that will occur. So what we're gonna do is uh, four if cast complete is uh, none, um, we are currently not casting anything. Uh, pick a target to cast, and then we'll go for target in uh, for grid uh, health something, I guess. Uh, for grid health in for grid and health in tar in uh, status. Um, lowest is equal to uh, none. And then we'll do uh, if lowest is none or lowest dot map x. Eh, we can do lowest dots. Unwrap. We're just gonna do this. Uh, yeah. I want to get the lowest health. Um, kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, dot one is less than health then lowest is equal to sum. Oh, uh, if health is less than zero, uh, if it's equal to zero, uh, continue. 
Um, no reason to heal someone with uh, full health. Okay. Then uh, check if this target has uh, lower health. Um, so if there is no lowest health specified or the lowest health uh, or this health is lower than the lowest health, then the lowest health is equal to sum, GUID, and health. Some, some, something in that ballpark uh, is what we want to do. <laughs> Status. Uh, let's do dot iter on that. Not found on I-64. Uh, ooh, next back. Um... I guess I just want the, oops, I just want the key, or the value, sorry. And then here we should be able to do that, okay. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to tell that what it wants, right? This is an option with a ref grid and a I-64. It's effectively what I want, and make that mute. Okay, um, so what this should do is, uh, let's say, uh, if let sum lowest is lowest, then uh, print want to cast on this lowest, and this will tell me the information, basically their GUID and the amount of health that they're missing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, obviously, that's not gonna happen. Oh, that's Patrick's health. Sick. I actually want to see at the end of the fight. So this is basically the the amount of health that Patrick has, and I think it's like three point eight k. Yeah, three point. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um. I think we're gonna do a filter quick then, maybe. Um, to be honest, this is just a test, so I'm not too worried about it. If I wanna go high performance, I need to get rid of all strings. So um, this is, yeah, this is not gonna be high performance. We're just gonna hack this in for now. I will say if, um, if GUID uh, starts with player, uh, if it doesn't start with player, right? Uh, we're only healing players, and that's not true for all fights, but in this situation, it's it's pretty pretty solid. Okay, want to cast on these people, and this is basically telling me the person who's missing the most health. Um, that I want to cast on. So when I start a cast, I will do cast complete in uh, MS plus uh, 2500. So this is ske schedule a cast um, on a target, which will be the uh, lowest dot zero. All right, so this is scheduling a cast uh, in the future. And so if I had that print, we'll only see this print once, and that's because the cast never happens. Um, else, if cast com uh, complete unwrap is, if it's greater than, um, and I could do an if let here, but I'm actually okay with this else. If the cast complete is uh, at the current time, or prior to the uh, MS, then print uh, cast landed, and then we can say cast complete is none, right? And so now we should see multiple casts, but they'll be on a certain duration. Okay, cast complete uh, dot one is the time in the future which it'll be complete. Okay, nice, so we have a, a couple cast landing, and what we can do now is basically determine uh, how much healing we did. So, um, 
And we can change this logic up, of course. But right now, we have zero latency, right? We're simulating instantaneous reaction times. Like, someone takes damage, and you instantly react uh, and start healing them. Uh, and you react and heal the lowest person. So you're looking at all the raid frames, you instantaneously, in zero milliseconds, decide which person needs to be healed the most at a given time. Um, now, this isn't going to be perfect. For, for Patrick, this will actually be pretty good. Uh, but one thing that I'd probably want to add is a threshold here that I don't want to start casting. I don't want to start casting a heal when the lowest person is missing 50 health, right? I'd rather wait and hopefully start a cast in like 500 milliseconds when someone takes some damage. But anyways, uh, what we can do is um, we can get the uh, get the health uh, of the uh, target we uh, healed. So what we can do is target HP is equal to uh, status dot get. Uh, mm. Yep. Uh, if let some uh, target good target uh, time else. There we go. Okay, and then we'll do this. Uh, if target time is greater than MS continue, um, cast hasn't completed yet. Okay, sweet. Uh, cast hasn't completed yet, and so we're gonna get the uh, target Gwid's health. Um, yeah, so that's the HP that they have missing, and then what we're gonna do is basically determine the amount that we're gonna overheal on this target. So it's now we're now some point in the future uh, is equal to uh, cast complete. Okay. So it's now some arbitrary point in the future. We get the health of the target we healed, and we'll say if uh, let healing is equal uh, uh, heal is equal to the um, uh, how do I want to do this math? I think just like. So I have it in a negative form, and I'm trying to think if I want to like invert that or how I want to deal with that. Uh, they also could be like over health right now, so I think I'm gonna do this. If target HP is less than zero, then the healing that is performed to that target is equivalent to uh, the larger of the two uh, target HP, or I guess the smaller of the two, we can just do negative 1,000, right? So whichever one is, wait, whichever one is bigger. If they're missing 500 health, they're at negative 500, and we heal for 1,000, so we heal for 500. Zoding, holy shit, thank you so much for the raid, PHP! <laughs> Hell yeah. How was, how was your stream? How was your Christmas, your holidays, whatever you were up to? I think this is correct. Mm, this, this is the healing. Uh, okay, and then set that we can do, uh, we can schedule another cast. How late is it there? Uh, it's, oh shit, it's seven in the morning. Yikes. Yikes. Um, target HP, oh, get, oh. You can just do this. Fine. Get the target good. All right. Uh, if it's less than zero, then the amount that we heal is whichever one is bigger, which is whichever one's closer to zero. It's very confusing. Uh, but if the target HP is negative five, and we want to do negative one thousand healing, or we want to do a thousand healing, uh, it would be negative five. But if they had negative two thousand health. Uh, negative 1,000 would be the amount that we heal. So this is going to find, basically, the smaller of the two values in the negative domain. And this is why I didn't like this. Lick, thank you so much for the seven months! Merry Chrysler! <laughs> Hell yeah! Okay, so cast landed. Nice. Alright. So now, 
Now we can say healing plus equals heal. So now we know how much healing we did. All right, so this is assuming I can just do a thousand health heal on a 2.5 second cooldown. Okay, 55k healing, not bad, that's respectable. Um, and then we can say uh, two HPS, and then we'll say healing as F64 divided by uh, duration of the fight as F64 divided by 1000. Ah, uh, yeah, let's do this. It's the same as multiplying it, but I, I like this more. So the fight duration in seconds, and then total healing we did. And this tells me the healing per second that I did. <laughs> All right, nice. 232 healing a second. Fucking garbage. Garbage. Absolute trash. And that's assuming absolutely zero latency. Now, let's, let's imagine, let's imagine, let's imagine for a minute that I can do 10,000 healing per cast, which I, which I can't, but let's imagine I did. Okay, 940 healing a second. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay. Um. Oh, that's pretty cool. Shit. Yeah, and if I had like, th this doesn't matter. I think 940.75 is the maximum healing I can do this fight. Right? Yeah, 940.75 is the maximum possible healing that I could do this fight. Um, assuming that I'm reacting, uh, but if I'm not reacting and I'm like spamming heals on one person, uh, that could maybe change. So, and in reality, I have to choose between different heals and, and uh, mana efficiencies and all sorts of different things that are really complex. Um, so what I can do is, cast isn't completed yet, okay. Um, yeah, so that's assuming a 2.5 second cast, but let's imagine I did, so my, my flash heal is uh, 1400 healing and I can cast it every 1.5 seconds. So this tells me if I didn't go oom, which I, which I would, uh, flash heal would get me 571.26 healing per second. Um, and that's not necessarily ideal because, um, so, All right, I'm gonna do something fucking funny. Um, so we're gonna assume 1400 healing per heal on average, and we're going to assume a 1.5 second cast. I can't sustain this for this fight, but whatever. This is like a, an interesting example. So what I'm going to do is I am going to perfectly heal. So what I'm going to do is I am going to look into the future to figure out who is missing the most health and make sure that I heal them instead. Even though they might be at full health, I am going to predict in the future who to heal. And this will tell me the absolute best healing per second that I can possibly do Assuming I can somehow anticipate perfectly when people take damage. Um, with the exception of I'm going to be spamming heals here, so technically it's not perfect. Um, and the way that I do that should be relatively easy. Uh, I'm just going to look at the status. And what I'm going to do is when I go to cast a spell, uh, so that's the status, I'm going to look at MS plus 1500. So this is now going to be the person, I'm going to find the person who's missing the most health, and look at that difference. And that is why I want to work on this tool, because, yeah, I can't predict the future, but what I can do is determine the frequencies tanks are taking damage. Typically, it's going to be on, like, a cyclical pattern. And if I can't anticipate even if it's not perfectly, right? This is saying that if I react, if I react instantaneously, zero ping, zero overhead, I heal the right person instantaneously every time, versus if I know who is the right person to heal in the future, like, okay, the tank's probably gonna take a big hit in the next second, so I'm gonna start casting a heal ahead of time, 
and then cancel it if they don't take damage. That difference there, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do 887 healing a second on there because that's that's not going to happen. But what I can do is something between the 571 and 887. And the goal is to basically find that something in there that's doable. Um, okay, so what I can do is uh, my... I know that I can cast, I can spam rank 3 heals indefinitely. And my rank 3 heal, if I'm not mistaken, does like 1,300 healing. Uh, let's just go test that out quick. Um, let's go see what it does. But I think it's I think it's 1.3k. Um, I know that I can spam it indefinitely. I will never go oom spamming that heal. Um... Okay. All right, so, uh, that should be my heal rank three. Yeah, heal rank three, um, 1.6K is, is what this does. Now, I'm critting every hit, but it should average about 1.6K. Um, yeah, 1.6. And I can spam this indefinitely. I, I, I will never go oom. When I'm fully buffed and I'm popping my potions and I'm using my cooldowns, I will never go fucking oom casting this spell. Uh, for like a... Th I mean, I'll go oom after like five or six minutes, but that doesn't matter. Um, so... And that's heal rank three, so 1600. So I can do 1600 healing, and that's without any buffs. I, well, I guess I technically have rallying, but that only affects crit. It doesn't affect the actual healing that's done. So, and I don't have uh, my potions running. I don't have my uh, flask running. That doesn't matter. Um, and I'm not, I don't have my mana oil. So there are a couple things. So 1600 is a very low conservative estimate for the heal that I can spam indefinitely. Now that takes 2.5 seconds to cast. Um, and thus, uh, here we go. So this is going to give me the maximum healing per second that I can do spamming that is 604. Um, and that is predicting the future. And if I can't predict the future, then the maximum healing I can do with that is... Probably pretty similar. Oh, 347. That's actually really bad. Wow. Huh. Okay, what if I don't predict the future, but I don't bother casting a spell? Um, uh, if lowest dot zero, I think that's the health, right? No, lowest dot one. If the health remaining is less than the amount that I can heal. Uh, sorry, if it is uh, greater than negative 1,600. I really should change that to that missing health. So we're working with positive numbers instead of negative numbers. Um, ooh, that's really bad. <laughs> wow. Basically, if I wait for someone to be missing health, um, basically, if I make sure that I don't overheal for a fight like Patchwork, I'm destroying my healing. Uh, okay. Huh. No, that kind of makes sense. All right, be right back.
Uh, it makes sense because if you wait for people to be damaged enough, you'll be giving time to other people to heal with overheals. Yep, no, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, and that's the point of this tool, is like, that, that is an intuition that is important as a healer to have, to understand the concept of like, being able to land a heal. Now, it's important to note that I am running against simulated data or not simulated data, I'm running against historical data of a successful killing of this boss. And thus, like, the healing is already there. The capacity and the reaction times and the playstyle is already there to correctly heal that fight. Uh, so what I'm mainly looking for are, like, weird frequencies that allow me to, like, get a heal off when most people aren't getting a heal off. I'm looking for basically the... I'm looking for the slop, right? What I'm trying to do is find the maximum amount of slop, and I am in this raid, and I'm a pretty good healer, and thus, like, I am competing with myself. And, like, if I, if I raided with myself, I would be pissed. I would not want to raid with myself because I am a very aggressive healer, and it would be hard to compete, right? Uh, like... You can only heal people who are missing health, and if there are two people there who are fucking sweaty as shit, and are, like, really on top of their heals, and they're using all their consumes, and they're bursting through their mana as fast as they can, like, yeah, it's gonna be fucking messy, and you're not gonna get many heals. So what I'm, I'm competing against myself, and I'm still finding decent healing per second. The 604 is actually really fucking good. 604 healing a second is insane on this boss, assuming you're not getting an innervate, you're not using an active trinket, you're not occasionally throwing out a greater heal because you have a, uh, um, you have a, a cooldown on your inner focus, or you have, like, uh, potions that you can pop that give you a little bit of flexibility, like, the rank 3 heal is absurdly conservative, uh, for, a, like, a 4 minute patchwork, which is what this fight was. Um, and I don't have world buffs, like, there, there's so many things here that aren't really factored in. Um, maybe do some Kelk to remove healers? No, I'm fine with that. I actually think it, I think the simulation is still very valid. Um, because it's really no different than if I were healing with any other group. Like, it, it's, it's the same. It's the same shit. Okay, um... So, uh, yeah, and this makes sense, basically, um, hmm. So, how does this compare? So, we see, like, 604 is you can predict the future. Um, yeah, and let's try, let's try predicting the future with the requirement of healing. And this will prohibit us from starting to cast a heal. So uh, this number was, we would cast a heal on whoever will be missing the most amount of health in 2.5 seconds when the heal lands. And what we're gonna do is change that, and we are going to, um, we're going to keep this requirement. So we are only going to cast a heal when we know that 2.5 seconds in the future Someone will be missing enough health that we will not overheal them. This is actually basically perfect play, right? You, there's is not even remotely possible to do, and this should be greater than the 604. Did I break something? Did I break something? Are people not missing that much health typically? Let's do like 500. Let's say people need to, someone needs to be missing 500 health for you in the future for you to bother casting a heal. Wait a minute. Uh, less than. There we go. Uh, less than. Okay, nice. So if I. Basically, this only should decrease, right? This should only get worse because my overhealing will go up. Now, it's going to be very slight. Um, and ultimately, for this fight, there aren't many circumstances where people are missing that little. Yeah. So in this situation, basically, if someone is missing any health at all, cast on them in the future, right? Um, 
And this is basically the, the minimum healing with perfect play. But then if I said, wait to cast until you know that someone in the future will not be overhealed at all. And wow, that went down? They're less than 1600, really? Why would that go down? Why would that be possible? I don't understand how that could go down. Um, oh, I know why, and that's really complex, and that's one of the things that's really cool. Basically, there are enough opportunities where people are missing 500 health, and instead of healing them, you fuck around and do nothing, and you wait for someone to be missing more health, and you end up spending less time actually casting. Like, maybe for this fight, let's say this fight lasts 250 seconds, you can cast 100 heals, but you're waiting for people to be missing enough health that you end up only casting 80 heals, and it turns out you're better over healing a little bit if that means that you're actually getting heals out. Like, right? Isn't that fucking cool? Like, this tool just tells me that. And it's, like, it's so simple. Writing this logic is so simple. It's like, what, 50 lines of code here? And it's able to tell me complex enough things, like, if you wait for people to be missing enough health that you actually can land your full heal and you minimize your overhealing, you actually hurt your overall healing per second because you chicken out and you don't bother healing people while you have nothing else to do. And, like... That is fucking awesome to me. Like, holy shit. Um, let's do this. Uh, uh, total heals. Zero. And we're going to track our total healing. Uh, total heals plus equals negative uh, 1600. All right, plus 1600 in this case. Can he constrain it to always heal nonstop the best target? Yeah. So for Patchwork, that's actually what the you pretty much have to do. Um, but I want to... Uh, okay. So healing uh, total... Oops. Healing this. Uh, and then total. We'll do this. Okay. And then I guess overhealing is total healing minus... Uh, okay. Total healing. Uh, Overhealing is total healing minus healing divided by, I guess, total healing. So this is the amount of... That is... This is the amount of healing that did not happen, and then divided by the total amount of healing. And I think that's what people use for total healing. Uh, Overhealing, uh, 0.2. All right. Yeah, and we want like four on that too. And we want some floats. Um, total heals. Zzz. Zzz. There we go. Yay! Okay. I should also cache the parsing. Nice. So that's 4% overhealing. So if I do. If I heal basically whenever, I just heal. I just fucking heal. I book, book my heals out. Um, I do 4% overhealing. Now, if I can't look into the future, and I'm basically healing reactionarily, um, then we got this. 10% um, overhealing, 347 uh, healing per second. Now, if I wait... Uh, for someone to be missing 500 health, we can see how much this helps or hurts us. Um, I think this will help us. No. And no change at all. Okay, uh, I guess for this fight, no one's really missing that much health. Let's try 2,000. And I think for this, you have to be pre-casting that I think this is going to dramatically hurt. Wow, it helped, and I think that's mainly coincidental. I think it just added a lot more variance in the actual healing um, that we just got a better cycle. So, okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to simulate healing uh, one target on cooldown, and that target is going to be 
Uh, we're gonna heal, hmm, probably Nutch, I think. He's the, like, main tank. It kind of depends on assignments, but we'll just say Nutch. All right, here's Nutch. So we're gonna say, um, if this is going to simulate what the, what the fight is actually more like. If we're not casting a spell, we're going to cast one on Nutch. And it's just going to be, uh, cast complete is equal to sum Nutch. Um, and then, uh, the cast will be completed in 2.5 seconds. Uh, and this is doable. This is totally doable. There's nothing that is difficult about doing this because you are casting, like, it doesn't matter if you have lag because you can buffer, right? You can buffer things for like, I don't know, probably half a second, which means as long as you're just spamming that key, you are guaranteed that you're, you're gonna cast every 2.5 seconds. Every 2.5 seconds, you will cast. It doesn't matter if you're lagging, it doesn't matter whatever. As long as you don't have greater than fucking 500 milliseconds of ping, you will land a heal every 2.5 seconds. So, um, this is basically what it actually looks like. Uh, and this is Gwid. Throw this in here. Um, and let's just say this is Nutch. Oops. Uh, let Nutch is equal to this. And then this is an into. This is a good. So, oops, uh, I actually don't want that. I just want this part. Just the good. Um, notch, perfect. Cast complete. I'm pretty sure I fixed that typo and then I broke it again. Uh, and now I should be able to use a reference because I put it in a local outside of the scope. Okay, so I'm just gonna cast on one target every 2.5 seconds for the entire fight. And this is basically what it looks like right now. 2130, no entry for key, target Gwid. Um, that's fair. Okay, I had a heal completed and they weren't even in the list yet. So what I'm gonna do is, um, uh, we're gonna get this and we're gonna unwrap or zero. If they're not in the list, they're at full health. We're just gonna assume they're at full health. Um, if, they're, if we don't know how much health they're missing, we're just going to assume they're at full health. Uh, unwrap or uh, zero, and then uh, I think that's... Okay. So that first heal gets thrown in the trash. Um, oh, and yeah, let's do this. Um, uh, record total heals, and then this is only if they are missing health do we actually compute the amount that we healed. But for in this situation, that if... Uh, if they aren't in the list, which they will be, they won't be in the list for the first cast, uh, because they haven't taken damage yet, we'll unwrap or zero, target HP will not be less than zero, um, and thus we'll just overheal, we'll pretty much delete 16, 1600 healing, we'll just go deleted. Okay, here we go, 354.77 healing, and here is our, uh, overhealing, 44% overhealing, and that seems pretty accurate, um, Every time we cast, we do 1,600 heals, and uh, yeah, here is the, um, isn't that fucking cool? 44% <laughs> over healing. So let's look, let's look at, at what, a, what a real fight looks like. Um, okay, so I want a little ham. Um, maybe I look at one of my uh, other... Naxes. Let's look at some of my Patrick attempts. I think this is one of our best attempts. Yeah, we got patched to 30%. Yeah, and here, here it is. I am casting, I am spamming uh, rank 3 greater heal. Or rank 3 heal. Yep. I'm spamming it. I'm spamming it on one person. And look, look what I got. Look what I fucking got! <laughs> I did 317 healing per second with 44.19% overheal. And my simulation says I would get about 354 healing a second and about 44% overhealing. <laughs> That's fucking awesome! <laughs> Hot damn. Hell yeah. That's pretty good. 
Um, and these are completely different raid groups. These are completely different groups, completely different fight durations, completely different styles of play. Um, but as a healer, for a fight like this, the tanks are just taking the same damage on the same intervals, regardless of what your raid composition is. It doesn't matter, you're taking the same damage on the tanks. So as a healer, for a fight that's as simple as patchwork, it's all raids are the same. The only difference between a faster raid and a slower raid is I can use more inefficient heals in a slower raid. Um, and that's what you see me doing in the, uh, the raid where we down patchwork, where we did it in four minutes. I did 607 healing a second, and that's because I used, uh, I mainly used, I guess that was probably rank four heal. Yep, I used rank four heal because I knew it was going to be a slightly shorter fight because it's a, a little bit stronger DPS group. I was throwing out some renews, some flash heals, some greater heals because I didn't give a fuck because I had the mana. Um, yeah. Fucking awesome. Um... So, um, now, what I want to do is something I've wanted to do for a long time. What I am going to do is I am going to simulate the healing per second I would have healing single target like I am doing now, but with an arbitrary fixed starting delay. So if I basically cast on the same target every 2.5 seconds I do a heal, versus wait one millisecond and then do that, or wait 10 milliseconds and then do that, or wait 500 milliseconds and do that. Basically, I'm looking for if there is like a, some like frequency, uh, or more specifically a phase that you line up better with the tank missing health. And I think that will exist. So that's what I'm gonna do. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a loop. Uh, we're gonna just call this uh, skew in zero to, we'll skew for up to three seconds. Anything else shouldn't matter because we're only doing uh, 1.5 or 2.5 second casts. Uh, and then we'll skew. And the way that we're going to skew is simply by, um, I guess, uh, starting later in the fight. Is that fine? Yeah, I guess just don't start doing things until later in the fight. Yeah, let's try it. I have no idea how quick this simulation is. Okay, it's relatively fast. Dude, they're different numbers! Fuck yeah! All right, uh, let's print these out in a way that we can graph them. Um, <laughs> uh, print... Uh, 10.4, uh, that's gonna, or just 10, that's the skew in milliseconds, and then the healing per second, uh, yeah, well, let's just do this, uh, HPS, um, let HPS is equal to this, uh, let, let overhealing is equal to, uh, this, all right, and then, uh, HPS and OH, All right, so um, we'll just do uh, 8.4, it doesn't matter, sig figs, fuck it. Uh, 10.4, that's uh, so overhealing, we'll do 10.6, and we'll have um, skew, HPS, and overhealing. So now this is basically making data that we can uh, potentially graph, uh, and we'll tee this to log.txt. All right. Fuck yeah. These sims are pretty slow. I think it's mainly due to the, like, uh, mm, probably the string comparisons, to be honest. Or the, it's probably the lookups. Like, every fucking millisecond a lookup in these cache, uh, in these things. I guess we can actually speed this up. How long did that take? Let's do this. Let's time it. Um... So, uh, basically, I think, I don't want to look up the status unless I need the status, um, and I don't need the status unless, basically, while I'm casting a spell, I don't need to do anything. 
I'm literally just waiting for that time, and that's most of the CPU time is just waiting for that. So that took 22.9 seconds. This should be significantly faster. Um, yeah, four seconds. Fuck yeah! Damn right! Easy fucking coding. All right, uh, so that was basically instantaneous. Um, <laughs> yeah, how long did the Sims take on that? Let's try this. Uh, let IT is instant now. Uh, start a timer. Uh, because we parse, we parse 200 megs of logs as part of that five seconds. Um, so then we can do a lap. Uh, let's do this. Uh, print ran simulations in, and we're not even threading or doing anything. You can understand where we're going to go with this. Um, simulations in IT uh, elapsed uh, as seconds F64. Um, so then we can just say like dot four seconds. Ah, dot six. I like, I like micros. Uh, use standard time instance. Bam. Okay. So... Yeah, uh, yeah, 200, 269 milliseconds to do that. And that's probably with printing. Let's turn off the prints. <laughs> yeah, two, 237 milliseconds. Nice, okay. I think we're doing fine on time. I don't think we're uh, bottlenecking on, on anything there. Okay, so now I should be able to do uh, plot dot plot, and I can plot the, uh, it's gonna be a skew uh, milliseconds. And then the uh, healing per second on the y-axis. Uh, samples we don't need anymore. Um, may, ah, fuck it. We'll put them in there just for funsies. Uh, we'll just put them to a ridiculous number for extra funsies. Not that it matters, I think, with plotted data, but uh, one to two. Okay. Uh, fuck. Uh, use one to two with... Lines? Yeah. Ah, look at that. Look at that. That's a difference? <laughs> That's ridiculous. What the fuck? Uh, let's run that out further. So if I run out to 100 seconds, this will start to hurt my heals quite a bit because I'll not be healing for a large part at the start of the fight. Uh, but let's just take a look. Oh, fuck yeah. There should be, like, some cyclical pattern, and it should be decreasing over time. Yes! Yes, there is! Whoa! Easy! Easy! <laughs> Fucking called it! Fucking called it! <laughs> That's cyclical. That's totally cyclical. Like, there is a fucking groove. Oh, that's exactly what I want to see. Because I can make it, once, once I do the heavy lifting and like uh, heavy processing in, in native land where I can actually do these simulations really fast, uh, I can basically find the properties that make this pattern exist and then simplify the math, right? Basically figure out the root cause here and then figure out a very simple transform to do that I can do in Lua in real time in an add-on in the game and I can have an add-on basically giving me a meter of like, you're too fast, you're too slow, like wait to heal, wait 200 milliseconds, find that fucking cycle, right? <laughs> Right? This is exactly what I was expecting would be the case. Like, holy fuck. Oh, that's so good. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go to 10. Oh my god. So fucking cool. We'll go to 25 so we can see uh, the decrease over time. Oh, it's so good. We're not even factoring in like up like using stronger heals or using an active. So here's the thing. 
We were able to run those simulations in, in two seconds and we did 25,000 simulations. We're doing simulations on every millisecond step. That's probably excessive. We could make this 10 times faster by doing 10 millisecond steps and we probably don't really lose any information. But this is also running on one core with data that we're working with strings because I haven't bothered making, like basically, when we make this high performance compute stuff, we'll remove all the strings and we'll, we'll replace them with ordinals. And basically during the simulation, we'll be using ordinals, we'll get rid of using hash tables, we'll have things just fucking, you look it up in an array, right? It, it's too expensive to use something like a hash table in something like this, so we would switch to just using direct index based lookups. Um, so we'll basically flatten a lot of these structures, put them all in arrays, get rid of all of the map usages, and I think we have probably, if we go with a 10 millisecond time step and we make those improvements, I think we have a hundred to a thousand times performance improvement here, and then I can throw 200 cores at it, and that will get us up to the, like, 200,000 times faster than what we're currently doing right now. And when we can do this 200,000 times faster than what we're doing now, we can then start to do some crazy things like randomly pick what spells to use at different points of the fight, or rotate in random trinkets, or pop, pop actives or uh, potions at different times of the fight to have it simulate all t different ways of doing the fight. And that's what we'll end up doing. Um... <laughs> Can you also check how delay between casts affects healing per second? Like, if I put a delay between... Okay, yeah, I can do that. I gotta... Uh, I wanna look at this data quick. I should cache the uh, log parse. To be honest, 200 megs, I have, like, multiple weeks of rating in that log. There's no reason to do that. Um, I would say the software is plenty fast. Um, okay. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. It's the same pattern over and over and over. And that's a massive difference in healing. 380 over 300? It's a 26% increase in healing per second. Just from like waiting for the better synchronization. Fuck, that's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool! Ah, uh, This is exactly what I predicted. This is why I even did any of this. I knew this would exist. I knew this would exist. I didn't think it'd be this pronounced, but I knew this would fucking exist. God, that's so fucking cool! <clears throat> alright, alright. I gotta, I gotta tell my friend about this. He got up early anyways. Um... The, uh... Yeah, it's pretty dank, I gotta say. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Like, how big are these windows? Let's see. Okay. So here are the cycles. Oh boy, that's a big window. That's a big window. Um, yeah. So like this peak, right, up here. Now what's really cool about this is it's not super noisy, right? It's not like all of a sudden in here it dips down and all of a sudden it dips up. There's clearly a fucking like relatively smooth curve here, right? Like this peak stays a peak for this whole territory. There's some 
intermediate bumps in here, but it's not like it fucking rockets down in the middle for no reason. And if we look at this entire window here, this is uh, 1682 millis, and then we have up here, kind of at the end of this like peaky area, uh, 2367, which means you have like a 700 millisecond window, which is easy to hit. You can easily synchronize with a 700 millisecond window. And this window right here is like 200 or 300 milliseconds, which is the peak. Like, literally that's 26% more healing per second by just synchronizing with that. <laughs> now in reality, you're probably syncing with boss mechanics and also syncing with um, the other healers in the raid, but that's a real thing. Like... If you can, like, I, I will eventually write an add-on that in-game will tell me these, basically give me these graphs in-game so I can figure out where I'm synchronizing. Um, and yeah, part of healing is finding the right synchronization with the other healers in the raid. Um, fucking crazy, dude. Um, all right. Yeah, that's fucking amazing, dude. Uh, who else is a tank? So that was, uh, that was Nutch. Let's copy that to log, uh, Nutch.txt. And then we're gonna switch to, we're gonna look at another tank, uh, just to see, uh, Hateful Strike. All right, it looks like Finn. Uh, no, that's uh, other raid. Uh, Jin, let's see him. So if I, this is just basically I'm healing someone else instead. Let's see if there's still a pattern. So exact same fight, same boss, same raid, uh, but a different healing target that I'm spamming heals on. And let's see, is there a pattern? Yes, there is. Once again, there's a fucking pattern. Like, it's totally a thing. It's totally a fucking thing. Like, yep, yep, it's because these are fundamental properties of healing. Like, these are seriously fundamental properties of healing. And I can feel it. I can feel it when I play the game, but it's so hard to describe, and I'm so happy to actually see data that so strongly indicates, yeah, look at that. Holy shit. Oh, man. Let's move a uh, log to... This is... Uh, Jind.txt. And remember, these are fights where we have different healers assigned to each of these. Like, Patrick is a fight where all of the healers just spam one heal on the same target. They're not switching targets. The fact that there is synchronization here shows that there is mechanical things. This isn't just quirks with your random bosses. This is fucking crazy. This is so cool. Oh man, who else do we have tanking? Wally. All right, Wally, let's go. Let's fucking go, Wally. Um... Whew! This is hot! <laughs> this is so good! Uh... <laughs> oh wow! Another pattern emerges! What are the odds? Yeah, here's Wally. Wow! Crazy! <laughs> oh, it's so fucking good! Oh! Oh, that's so good. And we're spamming spells. We're not even simulating, like, predicting the future or instant reaction times. These are real things that we can do as healers. Like, look at the variance here. That's like a fucking 40% improvement in healing by just waiting, like, 800 milliseconds before you start spamming again. Fucking nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, man. I think it was just those three tank and hates. Yeah, yeah, three tanks. Oh, man.
This is fucking crazy! <laughs> it's so good! Oh, this is so good, dude. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck, man? What the absolute fuck? <laughs> like... Oh... Uh. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. That's so fucking cool, dude. Um uh, I I don't even know what to say. Like I was expecting a pattern. I was expecting a synchronization between like the way that your healers were also the other healers were healing, but this is like like, these two are so similar. Look at this shit. I don't get it. Like, look at these fucking things. <laughs> like, they have... They both have two spikes. And they're... Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so good! Oh, man. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Fucking nuts, dude. Fucking crazy. Are you winning? Oh, we're winning right now. God, that's nuts. I can't believe it. I can't fucking believe it. There's so much info here. We're like, we... Like, you, you would never get this out of looking at Warcraft logs. Like, how are you gonna fucking figure this shit out? Like, oh my god. This is nuts. <laughs> it's fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is crazy. Fucking crazy, dude. It also means, like, if you find that rhythm, you're printing. What is that? 380? 380 versus 240? Literally 60% more healing by just waiting a little bit and then spamming. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my god. Fuck. <laughs> it's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, well that's crazy. Um Welp. Maybe make a network version of this so everyone can time their heals. I mean, like, I don't think this would work if everyone... I don't... I mean, to be honest, if I could get people to coordinate heals, I, I would just... We would be able to, like, fucking get rid of half of our healers. Because you would just have no overhealing. It'd be amazing. But... Wow, this is really good. This is really good. Um... All right, all right, chat. All right, chat. Um, okay, let me uh, make sure data. Uh, yeah, get status. Get add, get ignore, uh, cargo, star, source, plot, star.text. Eh, nutch this Wally. Get status. Get commit and uh, initial. 
Okay. Uh, history C and uh, cargo run release. So, uh, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to, we're gonna heal uh, Nutch. This is Nutch, 55, right? Uh, 6 ED 55. Uh, yep, that's Nutch. And then we're gonna just, we're gonna do a different fight. We're gonna go to a completely different fight. And we're gonna see if there are patterns in other fights as well. And I, I don't think there will be. Like, Grobulus has, like, really bursty damage, and it's not really sustained. And I think this might not apply. Now, even more things start to apply when there's bursty damage, because it means that there are situations where you want to save to use your trinkets for certain phases of the fight. Um, and that's what we're going to get into theory crafting at a later time. But let's see. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> it's a completely different boss. It still works. Holy shit. Ha <laughs> oh, damn. Well, that's just a thing. <laughs> Noise, nice. 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 Okay, next, next, next fight, next fight. Uh, Gluth. Gluth has like really bursty uh, heals. Like, like extraordinarily bursty. <laughs> like, you heal, you heal for only one phase of the fight, pretty much. Uh, but we'll see. I, I think th this, this one, this one, there will be no effect on this one, for sure. For sure. For sure, nothing. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, that's a thing that exists. So, okay. Well, yep. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this the end of the stream. It has been a, a while. Um, I'm fucking tired. I need to sleep. And, uh, the next step is some pretty serious, uh, like, overhauls and simulating, like, much more complex things. Like, using multiple... I think the next thing we'll do is simulate using different spells, uh, and simulating having a mana pool and MP5. And basically, like, picking the best heal to use for each fight. And then we'll go into simulating different delays between things and trinkets and actives and rotating heals and using different heals for different phases. And there's going to be a lot of crazy shit that we can look at doing. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. So let's see. We got to find some of the hosts. <laughs> yeah, you just got in here, Dev Angels. I'm sorry. We we're just wrapping up here. Um, all right, let me find someone. Let me find someone here. Um, hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm going to send you all to some game dev. Hell yeah. See y'all around. Cheers.